incredible breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and amazing scientific discoveries, new humanoid robots that will revolutionize our everyday life and labor market, space projects, the latest technologies of the future, advances in micro-robotics, nanotechnology, autonomous and flying transportation, all the news that changed the world in 2023 in one issue. The evolution of artificial intelligence. How is artificial intelligence organized and how does it work? How is ChatGPT structured and where are the limits of its capabilities? What will be the next breakthrough in AI? Answers to these and other questions about artificial intelligence in one video. See a digest of the best AI and GPT releases for 2023. Looking into the future is everyone's dream. What awaits us tomorrow or in 10, 20, 30 years? What will the world, which is already changing rapidly, be like? Will we preserve ourselves as we enter a new era of incredible technology? How will we live and work here and if we become a multi-planetary species and move to Mars? Watch the best issues about technology and the world of the future for 2023 in one video. Recently, GPT-3 already had an update to GPT-3.5, and that became the base for ChatGPT. The invention caused quite a stir in the scientific community. The algorithms capable of not only programming, but generating news and scientific articles, but also doing creative work from writing YouTube scripts to poems and narrative poetry. ChatGPT turned out to be so convincing, the OpenAI developers had to urgently create tools that could identify scientific papers written with the help of artificial intelligence. For example, researchers at the University of Michigan found that in a blind peer-reviewed test, experts attributed to a person one of three scientific medical abstracts written using an algorithm. This is dangerous because it will not only help lazy students cheat their professors, but it will also allow unscrupulous scientists to create a large number of AI-generated scientific publications. Scientific articles created by ChatGPT have been tested both by scientists and anti-plagiarism systems. Only the GPT-2, the previous version output detector, a fellow algorithm, was able to recognize an AI-generated text. Do you think that the new generation of GPT will actually replace copywriters, journalists, development writers, and poets? Leave your predictions in the comments. By the way, you can find a link to ChatGPT in the description if you want to play around. All you need is an email, phone number, and VPN. Meanwhile, the fate of AI is being decided in the US, where artists have filed a first class action lawsuit against the image generating artificial neural network. Two companies that developed these algorithms are to face the court, Stability AI, creators of Stable Diffusion Neural Network, and Midjourney, one of the most popular artificial neural networks that creates images from textual descriptions. The latter, by the way, was a primary choice for the participants of our Telegram chat image generating contest concerning the future on Mars. Did you know you can join our channel and chat via the link in the description? But back to the lawsuit. The third party involved was Debian Art, an online community of art lovers. The artists claimed that the neural networks copied billions of art images posted on the internet, including their own, without permission, and then used that data to create the derivative works. We'll follow the development of the case and keep a close eye on how it will influence the regulation of artificial intelligence use, as it's expected to become the world's most powerful technology in the next decade. Moving on to robots. Boston Dynamics released a new video, and as always, it blew up the internet. What technology is behind these stunts? The recent video has one very important difference when compared to previous dancing robot videos that shocked many unprepared viewers and made them deny Atlas's existence. The robot was dancing blindly, with no perception of its surroundings, and it was doing parkour while seeing only fixed obstacles. In the dancing video, the robot not only had to perceive objects of varying size, shape, and weight to grab and move them, but it also had to keep its balance and move at a speed close to a human speed. At a point of interest, the limit of the robot's capability was not manipulating the board, which the robot chose to move in a jump, given the momentum it received, instead of safely turning around with it slowly. Nor was walking off a wooden platform, which required the robot to calculate force while maintaining its own equilibrium. The robot had to use all the available force in each of its joints for the last asymmetrical jump, a 540-degree multi-axis somersault. 
It was the most difficult trick for the robot to pull off as it got tangled in its own limbs. So the engineers had to jump through some hoops and tinker with algorithms to prevent self collisions. But let's talk more about the robot's hands and its agility to perceive the surroundings. So far, Boston Dynamics has equipped Atlas with utility claw grippers with one fixed and one moving finger. These grippers made the first appearance in a Super Bowl commercial last year. The grip seems to be enough in the meantime. The situation is different with the robot's perception abilities. Atlas sees the world through the camera in its head, which it uses to build 3D maps of the surroundings. We've talked extensively about this mechanic in a previous Atlas video, and you can see that right here in the hint. This new video features the robot receiving commands as a set of information. Specifically, it had to cross a gap using a board, run and grab a tool bag, jump to a higher level, drop the bag, push a box and do a somersault. However, the robot had to determine the location, shape, and orientation of the objects on its own. And this is a big breakthrough in perception abilities. The company's engineers explain, quote, let's discuss the task of picking up a tool bag. Atlas sees the bag on the floor and running up to it, creates his own internal model of the shape to be picked up and plans how his hands will handle the object and how he himself will move with the object so that he can move quickly without losing his balance. The robot has to do unique calculations for each object, so for now, Atlas can't work in a human environment, and it probably won't in the next few years, so the company has no plans to sell the robot in the foreseeable future. However, it'll continue to work on the project, and the company will use the engineering achievement for Atlas's improvements in their own products. Sanctuary is also trying to impress the internet with a robot video. The company's website states its goal is to create a universal humanoid robot with human intelligence, which as we know is an incredibly ambitious goal and no scientist in the world has managed to achieve this yet. Sanctuary's video of a robot taking a mirror test or gently picking berries from a branch look pretty good if it weren't for one thing. The company doesn't disclose how exactly the robot performs the actions, nor does it say anything about their AI development progress. But on the other hand, we know that the robot has an avatar mode supposedly used Used for learning, but we can't know for sure whether the robot carries out all of the actions independently. There's a good chance the robot can't do anything at all right now. Still, the startup received $100 million from the Canadian government for research matters. The Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing, Engineering, and Automation IPA introduced us to robots' nighttime activities. These videos are designed to primarily draw attention to the company's work in laboratories. In our opinion, Fraunhofer engineers have succeeded. The Robot Technologies and Services Department create robotic systems and automated solutions for industrial and service sector uses. They develop and implement key technologies in innovative industrial and service robots as well as intelligent machines. NASA is serious about sending astronauts to Mars, and we've covered that in detail in the video. You can find that here in the link. The agency has recently selected 14 of the best technological ideas for further mission preparations, one of them being a dual-motor nuclear engine capable of taking astronauts to the Red Planet in just 45 days. Engineers at the University of Florida with Professor Ryan Gosse in charge have received the grant. The highlight of Gossier's idea is that it offered to simultaneously use the advantages of both chemical and electric nuclear engines. The scientist proposed combining a solid-state reactor, a wave rotor, and an electric motor in the same cycle to maximize the specific impulse of the work cycle while minimizing the dry weight addition. Hopefully, a NASA grant will help engineers create this setup, and interplanetary flights will eventually become mankind's reality. The astronauts will travel in the company of robotic SEALs. The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency believes that they'd help astronauts manage the stress-inducing long and dangerous journey. Paro, the robot, has already been tested by a crew of six during a two-week simulation of a Martian mission at the U.S. Mars Desert Research Station. The results of the experiment remain unknown as of now, and it's worth mentioning that the robot, equipped with microphones, silent motors, and tactile sensors, it would allow it to feel and react to touch. And something like this has been in use for 25 years in many European and Asian countries to help the elderly and patients with neurological diseases. Hello Robot, developers of the simplest and most versatile and useful manipulators for home use, have received a $2.5 million grant from the National Institutes of Health. The goal is to create a helper for the elderly as well as people with cognitive and physical disabilities using the Hello Robot Stretch Robot. 
Stretch is a very unusual design for a home robot. The slim and surprisingly simple and quite universal mobile arm can perform a wide range of tasks completely autonomously. The second generation robot has a vertical range of almost 110 centimeters and a telescopic arm, which can reach a maximum length of 52 centimeters from its base, plus a wrist that extends the robot's reach. The robot doesn't take up much space, can find and pick up and fetch things, and is not emotionally repulsive, as it doesn't try to look at a human. Stretch is not necessarily intended for medical institutions. On the contrary, at this stage, the company and investors expect the robot to be a capable home assistant who will help people in need of care to stay home as long as possible. Toyota Research Institute opened its door to the public for the first time and held the Toyota Research Institute Expo. At it, Toyota Motor Corporation CEO and Chief Scientist Jill Platt explained TRI's approaches to solving three major social problems – aging society, climate change and human understanding. To address them, TRI is developing five major areas of research. Let's list them. Energy and materials, where artificial intelligence is being used to accelerate breakthroughs in creating zero-emission vehicles. Human-centered artificial intelligence, which should improve the collective well-being of society. Human-assisted interactive driving, which will not replace but give more options to drivers. Machine learning is about teaching algorithms to adapt and change independently to the benefits of humanity and robotics, which should make people's daily lives easier and more enjoyable. TRI engineers are focusing a lot of attention on creating a robot for the home. They are not yet confident that they can solve this problem as it is complex. Scientists understand that so far we do not have universal humanoids, not because humans have not tried to create them. To test the robot, the team created a mock-up of an ordinary house where they try to rearrange furniture and make a mess and see how the robot handles it. They also put the robot out into the world, for example in the store for now, to see how it would handle this type of tasks. Overall, the robotics aren't sure if they are all succeed, but they are not going to give up. Do you think we will ever have capable home robots? GPT continues to be a major newsmaker. First, the fourth generation neural network wowed Bing users with its aggressive behavior, and then the neural network passed the theory of mind test and the level of a nine year old child without any prior training. What does the result indicate? Was the artificial intelligence really able to understand the task set before it? Could the neural network spontaneously have such an ability? There is another option. It is a step imitation of human abilities. Here's what Stanford scientists wrote about the experiment. Theory of mind, or the ability to attribute unobservable mental states to others, is central to human social interactors. Scientists use it to the test several language models without any examples or prior training. Neural networks introduced before 2022 are virtually incapable of solving such problems. The GPT-3 of January 2022 solved 70% of theory of mind problems, which is comparable to the performance of 7-year-old children. And the November 2022 version of the algorithm solved 93% of the problems, which is comparable to the performance of 9-year-old children. With that being said, the scientists themselves don't believe in the intelligence of artificial intelligence. Chat GPT probably solved these problems because of its growing language ability. The neural network has an incredible flair for language, which can give the impression that it is intelligent. It simply found and reproduced existing language patterns. NASA is finally making active use of generative design. New Atlas writes about it. The agency has been making custom design for decades and is only now beginning to trust artificial intelligence to do so. The generated parts look like something organic, and that's not surprising since they are created by evolution. Engineers load into the program reportedly Autodesk Fusion 360 cut all the critical measurements, loads and stresses the part has to withstand. Then. The artificial intelligence starts experimenting with shapes and get maximum strength with minimum weight. 
in a couple of hours engineers get a part that is on average two-thirds light and performs much better than ones designed by experienced engineers considering that in the space industry every gram is worth its weight in gold when put into orbit the method more than justifies itself the only thing left to do so is to introduce 3d printing as well as long as parts are made by traditional milling methods an unusual skyscraper 100 meters high with a roof garden will appear in Saudi Arabia. The highlight of the unique complex new Muraba with an area of 11 square kilometers will be the first layer with immersive technologies. They will allow you to dive to the bottom of the ocean as well as to visit the cosmos and even Mars. All thanks to the latest digital and virtual technologies including holography. The project is scheduled for completion in 2030. And now a small selection of unusual and strange robots. Engineers at the University of California, San Diego have developed a robot that can adapt to move around in different environments. To do this, it automatically changes the length of its limbs to crawl down a narrow aisle or climb stairs. The bot's telescopic legs consist of six nested concentric tubes connected by springs. All changes are regulated mechanically and the robot has no sensors. It does not calculate the path and trajectory, it just moves forward where it is told to. Such a robot is reliable and cheap, which means it will not be too bad to launch it into any dangerous environment. A team of engineers from the University of Tokyo presented a very unusual robot. The idea was that it could walk and fly and changed its shape in flight with the ability to manipulate multiple objects simultaneously. The media has already duped in the future flying robotic squids from the Matrix. Spider weighs 15 kg and can really take off. To realize the project, each segment of the robot is equipped with its own propellers and work like a separate multicopter, capable of directing thrust in any direction. The segments are connected together but are able to move in different directions. The developers have learned to coordinate all the propulsion systems a little in real time, but so far the movements looks extremely slow and clumsy. Walking with the design seems pointless at all. A robot can walk for 20 minutes and fly only for 9, but it's more likely to cover more distance in a minute of flight than in 10 minutes of this kind of walking. Researchers hope to reap many benefits when the robot can manipulate four limbs at once, but imagine how complicated this control must be to manipulate accurately. What do you think about the prospects of such design? The Sanctuary AI humanoid robot, which has long been teasing us with numerous YouTube videos, has apparently been tested at the Canadian Marks clothing retail chain. It's reported that Sanctuary was successful at performing various tasks usually assigned to human workers. The robot was controlled by a human, so no workplace was harmed during the testing. All in all, the bot successfully performed about 110 different operations, though what's the point if it can't work autonomously? The startup's goal is to create a general-purpose robot, however, without artificial general intelligence, the task is nearly impossible. Meanwhile, the Canadian government keeps investing to stay in the game on par with other countries. An AI researcher's team from Google and the Technical University of Berlin has unveiled PA-LME, a multimodal vision language model featuring 562 billion parameters. It uses both visuals and speech to control robots. The developers claim it to be the largest algorithm of this kind ever created and that it can perform multiple tasks without overtraining. Essentially, Google's PA LME is a universal robo-brain that receives human commands in natural language. And yes, the similarities to ChatGPT are obvious. According to Google, when Pot LME receives a high-level command such as get me rice chips from the box, it can generate an action plan for a mobile robotic platform equipped with an arm that will then perform the task without any human involvement. Pot LME manages its tasks by analyzing the camera data, including dynamic changes. However, the Google researchers claim to have observed several interesting effects that appear to be related to a large language model at the core of Pot LME. First, there is positive transfer, or the ability to accumulate knowledge and skills while working on tasks and use them in the next ones. Second, as stated by the engineers, 
Pot LME features new functions such as a multimodal chain of reasoning and multi-image output. Google researchers now plan to further explore applications of Pot LME for real-world tasks such as home automation or industrial robotics. We look forward to seeing more examples of the algorithm's work. Scientists from South Korea have created a MINA robot that enters blood vessels, performs the necessary surgical procedures such as clearing blocked arteries, and returns to the extraction spot. The iRamen robot is controlled by magnets. Before injecting the robot, scientists make a 3D map of the patient's blood vessels surrounding the blocked area. The robot uses the map to navigate autonomously. The catheter delivers the robot into the blood vessel while an external magnetic field is used for creating a rotational motion to untether the robot from the catheter. The external magnetic field is then used to guide the robot to the treatment spot, relying on a 3D map to navigate. Amazing, isn't it? Next, on to the bioengineering news. Engineers at the University of New South Wales have created a robot able to 3D bioprint directly on organs and tissues inside the human body. The F3DB multifunctional 3D bioprinter has a soft print head with a high degree of freedom integrated into a flexible robotic arm that delivers multilayer biomaterials to internal organs and tissues. The device functions on the master-slave architecture and is controlled by a kinematic inversion model and learning-based controllers different kinds of gels can be used for printing. Swedish scientists have designed a technology that allows to grow electrodes directly in living tissues. This may change the integration methods of electronic circuits, including brain implants. To create soft electronically conductive materials in living tissues, a special gel containing enzymes as the assembly molecules is injected into the body. Contact with body substances changes the gel structure and makes it electrically conductive. There is no need for genetic modification or external signals such as light or electrical energy. Using the new technology, engineers were able to grow electrodes in the brain, heart and tail fins of danio fish. The material didn't cause any immune reactions and didn't affect the normal functioning of the body systems. Lastly, we have engineers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology who have created a 3D printable robotic heart. The soft and flexible replica matches a patient's heart in size and shape and allows to tailor the treatment according to the personal structural characteristics and heart diseases. Building a three-dimensional computer mode helps to adjust the size and shape of such an artificial organ for each patient. When the model is ready, the heart is simply printed with the use of special polymer-based ink. This produces a soft, flexible shell with the exact shape of the patient's heart. The aorta can be printed additionally. Sarco's technology announced that it has successfully completed the final verification of its outdoor autonomous manipulation of photovoltaic panels. The project, by the way, was funded by the U.S. Department of Energy and its goal is to create a robotic system for building solar fields. Such a system should deliver, detect, lift and place photovoltaic modules in an open field. A key element of the Sarco solution was a drone with the Guardian XM robotic system on board and an additional autonomous delivery vehicle. Elon Musk has decided to fight the development of GPT in his usual manner, by creating his own artificial intelligence enterprise. The XAI company has already been registered and thousands of GPUs for training the generative model have been purchased. All that remains is to find additional investors and developers. Now, interestingly enough, the name XAI echoes the new name of Twitter Inc, which is now XCorp. Now, some commentators believe that the new name reflects Musk's desire to make the app as multifunctional as possible, like the Chinese WeChat, to use it for payments, taxi orders, food delivery and other services. Others speculate that XCorp will become the parent company for Musk's other projects, namely XI and SpaceX. Now, it's also worth mentioning that at the same time that Musk announced his new investment plans, OpenAI shared news about their investment in general-purpose humanoid robots. So in the upcoming race, XAI will potentially try to create an advanced AI for the Tesla bot, while OpenAI will be working on a universal humanoid vessel for ChatGPT. The company has shown interest in robotics before. It designed its own robot hand, which can recognize objects by touch and manipulate them. Recently, 
OpenAI invested about $24 million in One X Technologies. We told you about them before, although back then they were Halodi Robotics. The company already has its own humanoid robot, Eve, with a wheelbase. That robot is quite capable, but it still lacks a pair of legs for greater feature variety. And it's these very legs that are supposed to be created with the investment money. The new bot has already been named Neo. We'll be able to see Neo on legs this summer. The creation of a dexterous humanoid robot powered by a strong AI will have enormous consequences, including dramatic changes in the labor market and enormous profits for investors. Such potential rewards are attracting more and more developers and investors. Moving on. The Chinese company Didi, which already owns a robo-taxi service, has unveiled a new concept. It's a level 4 neuron drone, a self-driving taxi whose main feature is a robotic arm for picking up passengers' luggage. Robotaxi isn't China's only drone service. For example, there is also a 24-hour robotaxi service in Shanghai with autonomous vehicles, autonomous parking, charging and washing. China is truly ahead of the curve in this domain. But judging by the video, this is more of an experiment than an optimized service, for now at least. BYD, a Chinese car manufacturer, has presented a supercar equipped with an intelligent body control system. The four-engine Yang Wang Dancing U9 is claimed to be able to dance, ride on three wheels, and even jump. BYD's DISA system is similar to the active suspension systems on state-of-the-art cars by Porsche and Mercedes-Benz. It helps reduce body roll, handle difficult off-road situations, reduce aerodynamic drag, and improve driving efficiency. DSUS includes three levels. An intelligent damping body control system, an intelligent pneumatic body control system, and an intelligent hydraulic body control system. Disney has presented its new robot. The developers admit that their goal was not to make a reliable or accurate machine, but to establish an emotional connection between the robot and the viewer. The robot's movements are quite unstable, but that's even better, as when it falls, it's supposed to be as cute as possible and bring out the personality of the robot. The idea is that failure is simply a variation of the norm. Rejection is expected and even pre-programmed. This was the philosophy behind the robot designs for their previous projects. The most challenging part was combining durability, flexibility, thoughtful design, and acute appearance. In addition, it should be easy and inexpensive for the robot to recover from particularly nasty falls. Engineers also developed a simple interactive software interface for the robot that allows the user to set key poses and sequence them, taking into account the physics of the robot. Elbit America has introduced the Excite helmet display, which enhances helicopter pilots' vision. Excite can be worn over a standard helmet and receives data from external cameras, sensors, radars, lidars, databases, neural networks, and other sources. The helmet is claimed to give the pilot 360-degree visibility, as well as enhanced vision in darkness, fog, rain, snow, and sandstorms. In addition, the pilot's field of view is augmented with a constantly updated stream of data on both flight conditions and the world around him. The developers try to provide pilots with the maximum amount of information while reducing their workload. Whether they succeed or not, we'll find out if the helmets are implemented. Unstructured Robotics and Motive Space Systems have teamed up to create a unique product for NASA. It won't just be an open space assembly and manufacturing system. The companies will develop Space ROS, an operating system for robots certified for spaceflight. It'll be used to create various robotic space applications with manipulators and more. Google has taught its robots to sort waste with the help of deep reinforcement learning, which includes two stages. First, real-world training at Google offices and special training classes. And second, simulation training. The task wasn't simple. 23 robots had to look for trash in the office, recognize it, find the trash bins, and figure out which one to put it in. It had to do this as quickly as possible. The success rate grew along with the accumulation of data and is currently at 84%. It took about two years to achieve this result. Reinforcement learning allows robots to learn complex behaviors by trial and error, getting better and better over time. 
Google believes that this is the best method to teach robots to adapt to a changing world. The company's engineers have previously taught their robots complex skills, such as playing tennis, picking up objects, and multitasking, where robots perform complex commands by understanding and breaking them down into smaller tasks. In total, the researchers ran 540,000 tests in classrooms and 32,000 tests in three office buildings with 30 collection sites. Agility Robotics has treated us with a funny cat video, or rather, with the updated Digit Robot, which is being promoted as a near-ready commercial version of a smart warehouse assistant. But it doesn't seem to be a very good worker, because in the video, the robot clearly slacks off and wants to chat instead of working. No Digit, you should work so people can rest. On April 19th, 2021, NASA's Ingenuity Mars Helicopter Scout went down in history when it made its first powered, controlled flight on another planet. It has exceeded the expectations of its developers and recently celebrated its 50th flight on Mars. Now that's 45 more flights than had previously been expected. NASA recently shared the statistics. Altogether, Ingenuity exceeded the expected total flight time by 1,250% and the expected flight distance by 2,214%. By the way, NASA is already developing the second generation of Mars helicopters, which will be much bigger and more powerful. We can't wait to see them in action. Sanctuary AI has long been intriguing everyone with its videos of robots capable of the most delicate and precise manipulations. Recently, the company presented the robot's teleoperation system. In the video description, the researchers explain that the robots have three control modes, directly piloted by people, operated by people using pilot assist, and supervised by people, while using the robot's built-in autonomous control system to observe, assess, and act on tasks. Well, we're waiting for examples of at least semi-autonomous performances. Naval Labs is collaborating with researchers at Career University's Robotics Laboratory to conduct a study that aims to teach robots human-like movements. For this purpose, engineers have developed the Ambidex robot, whose joint structure resembles that of a human. The idea is to make robots as similar to their owners as possible, including their emotional perception skills, to facilitate robots becoming commonplace in our homes. Engineers at KimLab, the Kinetic Intelligent Machines Laboratory at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, held a great performance at the university's open house. We've already shared with you some of the elements of the show in our videos. Now it's clear what the guys were preparing for. So next we have an international team of scientists led by the University of Sydney, who have proven that nanowire robots are capable of learning and remembering just like biological brains. The networks demonstrated both short-term and long-term memory. The experiment proved that complex cognitive processes, which are traditionally associated with brain activity, can be embedded in a non-biological model. Nanowire networks are a type of nanotechnology. They're usually made of tiny silver wires coated in a plastic material, connected to each other in the form of a mesh. These wires mimic the network-like structure of the human brain. Clearly, many scientists believe that progress in this field could seriously advance robotics, giving robots the ability to, for example, make quick decisions in unpredictable circumstances. A team of engineers from Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute has come up with a way for quadruped robots to walk narrow paths. The researchers installed two reaction wheel actuators, also called RWAs, on the back of a unitary A1 RoboDog. Now, interestingly, these RWAs are commonly used to adjust the angular momentum of satellites. One of the RWAs controls the bot's pitch axis, and the other controls its list angle. Both are contained in a single module of about 4 kilograms. So when the robot's leg is on the beam, the pair of RWAs automatically compensates for any changes in the center of gravity. The laboratory tests showed that the robot was able not only to walk about three meters on a six centimeter wide wooden beam, but it also resisted attempts to push it off. Moreover, when falling upside down from a height of about half a meter, the robot was even able to flip in the air and land on its feet like a cat. Engineers at MIT have prepared a study for the 2023 International Conference on Robotics and Automation, which we'll definitely tell you about in a separate video. 
The scientists taught a quadruped robot how to dribble a football cross country. That's a soccer ball to those Americans watching. And this is a really impressive achievement, as anyone who has tried to do it themselves will know. The Dribblebot is a unitary Go One robot that has undergone intensive training with reinforcement in simulation. The robot uses built in sensors and calculations to show real dribbling, specifically controlling leg swings to apply targeted force as it moves, balances, and navigates with respect to the ball. Now, it isn't that easy for a robot. For the same conference, researchers at the University of Zurich prepared their own report. They taught the Animal C robot to catch a ball. This means that the robot can see, think, and react very quickly. Instead of the usual cameras, this robot was equipped with event cameras, which are capable of almost instantaneous motion detection. This reduced the perceptual delay so much that the robot was able to track the ball and locate the precise spot to catch it. The ball was thrown from a distance of four meters and was flying at about 50 meters per second. Engineers from the University of Arizona have unveiled a new drone that won't fall down or break when it collides with an obstacle. This is an experimental quadcopter with an inflatable Sobar body. All of the internal electronics are standard, but the body is made of nylon fabric with polyurethane coating and can be inflated. Additionally, the drone is equipped with a bottom-mounted grip made of steel springs encased in an inflatable nylon sleeve. When the grip is pressed hard against an object, such as a branch, the springs automatically pop out and wrap around it, keeping the sew bar in place for as long as necessary. When the drone needs to take off, a built-in actuator inflates and stiffens the grippers, returning the encased springs to their original configuration. It only takes about three milliseconds to grip an object and less than three seconds to release it. DJI has introduced the new Mavic 3 Pro drone, complete with three cameras. The system consists of the main Hasselblad camera and two telephoto lenses. The Hasselblad camera can record 5.1K video up to 50fps and could do slow motion at 120fps in DCI 4K mode. A second 48MP camera with triple zoom can record 4K videos and take photos. Finally, the third camera with 7x zoom can record 4K videos at 60fps. The drone, with a maximum flight time of 43 minutes, tracks obstacles in all directions with eight wide-angle sensors. The pilot can switch on cruise control, set waypoints for the drone to autonomously create and navigate an itinerary, or choose from a variety of creative tricks. The new Mavic can automatically create a cinematic sequence and even add a soundtrack, or wirelessly transmit video to a smartphone for mobile editing. The drone will cost $2,199. This summer, an online supermarket will open in Japan. But here's the catch. Artificial intelligence will guide customers through the selection and ordering process, while robots will assemble orders at a fully autonomous warehouse complex. The Green Bean Supermarket is a project of Eon Group. According to its representatives, the site will feature over 50,000 products. The warehouses will be robotized by the British company Ocado Group. According to media reports, it'll take under six minutes to assemble an order that includes over 50 products. Consumers will be able to choose the time range of delivery. Artificial intelligence will select the best route. Humans obviously will be couriers, although it's not improbable that robots will claim this position in the future. NASA has decided to build several lunar bases instead of one as planned. It will be part of the Artemis mission. However, NASA isn't going to build all the bases alone. It expects other agencies from Europe, Canada and Japan to join the project as well. The location of the main camp won't change. It's the Shackleton Crater at the Lunar South Pole. Now, this site was chosen because of the water ice in its shadowy zones. The base will be the center for moon landings and will include energy infrastructure, radiation protection, waste disposal facilities, and a landing pad for incoming crews. There will also be a lunar rover for astronauts to get around the moon and a habitable mobility platform that crews can use to visit other places on the moon for up to 45 days. So, next up, Stanford University students have designed glasses which will help their owners ace any exam, date, or job interview. So, the way it works is this. The AR and AI-powered Riz GPT analyzes the speech of the person who the user is speaking to and gives them hints in the form of facts and clever thoughts on the topic. The device is able to recognize faces and use the communication history with each person to create conversation models. RizGPT connects to a web application on a smartphone via Bluetooth, which converts speech into text in real time 
using OpenAI's Whisper system. So based on the data obtained, the gadget offers possible answers to questions. All that's left to do is to make the glasses indistinguishable from real ones. And then hey presto, you don't have to think anymore. What do you think of that? ACM SIG CHI, an international community of students and professionals who study human-machine interaction, has presented the JIZ AI ARM system. It's a wearable unit with six terminals for detachable manipulators controlled by the user. Now, development details are still being kept secret, but we're looking forward to the release of this project. So, do you remember the video created by Artificial Intelligence in which Will Smith eats spaghetti? It was done more as a bit of fun than anything else, but nevertheless, the technology that created it is advancing rapidly. The new AI for text-to-video conversion from NVIDIA first generates video from text and then refines it using animation training on thousands of existing clips. The model estimates what might change in a particular part of the image over a period of time, then creates a sequence of frames and finally creates images of the same quality for each frame in the sequence. The team used the system to create multiple sample videos at 1280 by 2048 pixels, simply from text cues. Each of these videos contains 113 frames and is played back at 24 frames per second, so they're about 4.7 seconds long. Now, of course, there are still a lot of errors and other oddities in them, but in terms of image quality, this is an incredible leap forward from what we saw with ModelScope earlier this month. The rate of progress suggests one thing, that AI will soon be able to generate very realistic videos from any text. At this rate of AI development, the future may indeed be more interesting than any predictions. ChatGPT continues to amaze researchers with its capabilities. Researchers at the University of California, San Diego, have tested ChatGPT to give online advice on medical topics. Now, in this case, the idea was for the chatbot to actually replace the doctors. The results of the study are unequivocal. The neural network not only gave more detailed and clear answers to questions, but it also showed much more empathy for patients. Although perhaps the latter might say less about the empathetic nature of AI and more about the lack of empathy on the part of the doctors. The questions for the experiment were taken from the website Reddit. There's a special service called Ask Docs where users' questions are answered by professional doctors with proven qualifications. Results of the experiment are, to say the least, stunning or maybe depressing. It depends on how you look at it. I say that because the answers from the neural network were, amongst other things, of higher quality than those from the doctors. Moreover, the evaluation was conducted by medical experts who did not know which answers belonged to the doctors and which belonged to ChatGPT. So, as a result, the experts preferred ChatGPT's answers to the doctor's answers 79% of the time. And at the same time, the AI's level of empathy was 45% and the doctor's was less than 5%. But don't get too excited. We mustn't forget that ChatGPT is more than capable of producing outright lies and hallucinations. And it has to be said that without special education, you're unlikely to be able to distinguish nonsense from truth every time. So for now, have patience and make an appointment with a doctor if you have a medical complaint. While everyone's going crazy about ChatGPT, researchers at MIT are developing revolutionary liquid neural network technology. While conventional neural networks learn by example and don't adapt well to changes in input data, liquid neural networks adapt easily to them in real time, significantly improving their ability to analyze unpredictable environments. In other words, thanks to liquid neural networks, robots and drones can potentially make reliable decisions in new and unknown situations. For example, if such brains were given to the Atlas robot, it could show parkour or serve tools at a construction site rather than just in a prepared lab. Scientists at MIT demonstrated this on a drone that had to follow its target in unfamiliar conditions, relying only on vision. Our experiments show that we can effectively teach the drone to find an object in the forest in summer and then deploy the model in winter in urban environments with different tasks such as searching and tracking, the developers told us. In other words, the new class of algorithm is capable of capturing critical causal relationships, separating important and unimportant aspects from the changing incoming data stream. So this new technology in its development can solve all existing application issues, not only for drones, but also for unmanned transport and robot systems. The Artificial Intelligence Division of Google DeepMind showed humanoid robotic soccer players, which it turns out are being developed there. And the developers have declared that this is the real embodied intelligence. That is, if ChatGPT operates in the digital space, then these robots are its analog in the physical one. But don't be too quick to laugh. 
These robot soccer players differ from their counterparts, who are usually rather clumsy. They are not afraid of physical contact, they don't try to avoid collisions, and they're able to get up quickly, and most importantly, they're incredibly goal-oriented. So this brings them closer to embodied intelligence, that is, an agent who can act in the physical world with the agility, dexterity, and understanding that animals or humans do. So do you think we're on the verge of seeing real-life Terminators, or does it still look a bit lame? Nauticus Robotics is taking its underwater robot transformers out of the lab and into the real world. Three Mark II aquanauts will head to the North Sea and the Gulf of Mexico in the coming months to do work for the company's clients. The Aquanaut MK2 is an all-electric, unattached and autonomous underwater robot that is controlled by an acoustic communication network and relies on artificial intelligence software. It allows the robot to act autonomously, performing a number of tasks without human involvement and if necessary, the operator can connect through a user interface. The boat-shaped robot can swim and collect data using onboard sensors. And if intervention is needed, Aquanaut will deploy its two electric arms and do what needs to be done with high precision and force control. And it's not just a trivial set of underwater infrastructure. The Nauticus team believes it can turn the outdated ocean exploration industry entirely on its head, believing that the unexplored depths of the ocean have more potential than space exploration, for example. And which do you think is more important, conquering the moon or exploring the ocean depths? Meanwhile, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has created a self-propelled autonomous robotic snake designed to explore extreme extraterrestrial landscapes such as Saturn's icy moon, Enceladus. So what's unique about Enceladus is that beneath its crust of ice, it has an ocean of salt water that constantly ejects plumes of icy particles mixed with water and simple organic chemicals into space. The Exobiology Extant Life Surveyor, EELS for short, robot is 4 meters long and weighs 100 kilograms and consists of 10 identical rotating segments that use propeller heads to move and grasp. Given the communication delay between Earth and deep space, EELS must be able to operate and solve its difficulties completely autonomously. The robot is equipped with four pairs of stereo cameras and LiDAR to create a three-dimensional map of its surroundings. LiDAR determines range by targeting a surface or object with a laser and measuring the time it takes for reflected light to return to the receiver. EELS uses this information to create navigational algorithms to make it easier to traverse difficult spaces. To test EELS mapping capabilities, last year the JPL team dropped part of the robot into a vertical shaft on the Athabasca Glacier in Canada's Rocky Mountains. The final form of EELS will contain 48 small motors which will provide more flexibility. Many of them will have built-in force and torque sensors that will allow eels to feel how much pressure the robot segments are exerting on the terrain. This will help the robot navigate over uneven surfaces in tight places. Next, engineers will need to add a number of research tools to the robot. It should be ready by next autumn, but it won't fly to Enceladus for a while yet, I think. Swiss startup Elethor unveiled its Morpho drone with transforming wings that adapt to reduce wind resistance. The drone has a bullet-shaped aerodynamic body with four propellers, as well as four wings. Each wing can rotate independently of the main body. On the ground, the drone stands upright with its wings tilted down to keep it upright. It then takes off like a quadcopter using feedback from onboard sensors to adjust the angle of each wing and reduce exposure to side winds. If the drone needs to move into the wind, it unfolds its wings and uses them as a sail, thereby saving on energy consumption in flight. The position of the wings is automatically adjusted by the controller, and it's hoped that Morpho could eventually be used to inspect such things as power lines, power plants, wind turbines, and offshore oil platforms. And because its wings can be pulled close to its body when it hovers, it can get very close to obstacles during inspections. As it moves between inspection sites, it can switch to faster, more energy-efficient flight with a fixed wing. The University of Texas Robotics Laboratory has also taken up humanoid robots, and lately it appears everyone has been developing them. So the developers hope to create a universal robot based on their research robot Draco 3 to help in the home and office. Well, let's wish them luck. And although this task is rather, let's say, impossible now, sooner or later, everyone is probably going to have this sort of robot at home, just like they have a computer or smartphone.
Human fingers are not as simple as they seem. They have an unbelievable degree of dexterity and sensitivity. And this is well understood by developers trying to replicate them in robots. Right from the off, there are two major problems to solve. First, to create a design that will accommodate everything that is needed while maintaining a size which is close to that of a human finger. And second, to give the robot a mind to control the design. So researchers at Columbia University have tried to solve this problem and they have taught robotic fingers to perform dexterous manipulations of complex objects without dropping them. And to do so solely by touch, that is without any feedback from vision. So the question is, how are they built? Well, under the skin of each finger is a flexible reflective membrane and underneath that is an array of LEDs and photodiodes. Each LED turns on and off for a fraction of a millisecond and the photodiodes record how light reflects off the inner membrane of the finger as it deforms. The trained model matches this pattern to the location and amplitude of the finger touches. The second component of success is reinforcement learning, which gives robots the ability to evaluate an object by touch to see how best to pick it up, or indeed whether it's possible, at least in principle, to pick it up in the first place. ClearPath Robotics, a Canadian company developing transport carts for industry, has decided to expand the market for its robots and suggest using them at home. For this purpose, the engineers installed the Franco Research 3 robotic arm with force sensors on the mobile platform Husky, so it can handle both heavy and fragile objects. The robot can move on its own, but other functions it will have to learn by itself. I'll leave it to you guys to rate the usefulness of the invention on a scale of zero to 10. Interest in flying cabs has come and gone because of the problems with range and safety and regulation and so on. Nevertheless, engineers are still working on them. Terradynamics, for example, has developed a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle that takes off like a helicopter and flies like a plane, all thanks to transforming wings in flight. The electric Transwing XP4 takes off with four propellers, hovers, folds its wings and then flies like an airplane with two propellers right up to the landing site. This allows a 2 meter apparatus with a wingspan of 4 meters to increase its range due to the lifting power of the wing. By the way, many companies tried to solve this problem, but so far it appears only Terradynamics have succeeded. While the Transwing XP4 will be tested to deliver cargo from ships to shore, in the future, of course, the creators dream of a fleet of flying cabs. The Dira Robot Brag exhibition was held in Denmark, organized by the Danish Institute of Technology and the Danish Industrial Robotics Association. The purpose of the exhibition is to draw attention to robotics and to accelerate robotization in the country. We've selected a few interesting projects from the exhibition for you. For example, the Institute of Technology presented at the exhibition its part of the project for NASA to return Martian soil to Earth. Institute engineers are working on a vision program for a robotic manipulator that will work directly with the samples. Robka has unveiled its Arthur Robotic Scanner, which stands for Arthritis Ultrasound Robot. Using advanced ultrasound scanning controlled by artificial intelligence and providing high image quality controlled by AI, the robot can examine patients for rheumatoid arthritis and independently generate reports for patient records. This technology allows for early diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis and enables large numbers of patients to be scanned without the presence of a specialist. Seasight Solutions has introduced an autonomous lifting positioning system for wind turbines. It can independently and safely lift and correctly orient wind turbine components without human intervention. The system is simple and versatile enough to work with other parts and structures as well. California startup Varda has deployed its satellite into orbit which will serve as a space pharmaceutical factory. And then when it descends from orbit, will work as a hypersonic test facility at Mach 25. The purpose of the lab is to research the growth of protein crystals. This field is particularly attractive to drug developers. For example, Not Boring, working with Varda, has developed a unique leukemia immunotherapy drug, Vlincytol, worth $114 billion per kilogram. The size of a yoga ball, the tiny pharmaceutical factory will stay in orbit for mm, just over a month before launching an angled retro accelerator that will slow it down enough to fall back to Earth. Falling through the vacuum of space to its final landing point at the U.S. Air Force Proving Ground in Utah, the vehicle accelerates to hypersonic speeds in excess of Mach 25, 
or about 31,000 kilometers per hour. Functioning as a hypersonic facility will help reduce the overall cost of launch. The ESA, or European Space Agency, is involved in space research with the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. There, a group of engineers is concerned with the question of whether it is possible to fry potatoes in space. After all, if humans will be living in orbital stations and bases on the Moon and Mars, how would they live without their favorite fries? It turns out that it takes a lot more than a frying pan with hot oil to make fries. Frying is tricky, as it is a set of very complex principles and chemical processes and some of them may not work in weightless environments. In particular, bubbles that form on potatoes during cooking might behave differently without gravity, as oil cannot circulate around the potatoes. It causes the bubbles to stick and form an insulating layer of steam. It may cause the potatoes not to cook properly. For the study, an environmental fryer was created, simulating conditions in space and recording all the details of the process. The apparatus was automated, sealed, and pressure tested after which it was placed on board an ESA aircraft that flew in parabolic arcs, creating weightlessness for several seconds at a time. Startup 1X, now backed by OpenAI, has employed its robots as guards in two industrial facilities in Europe and the United States. The EVE robot is capable of many tasks, including patrolling, opening doors, and collecting items. The company says it is now developing a plan to bring its smart machines into nursing homes and hospices. Developers say that the robot is also good as a bartender and nurse. Eve is able to learn by adding each of its actions to the database used by all of the company's robots. The investment and participation of OpenAI is expected to allow the startup to incorporate advanced language models into their robots in the near future, so that they can correctly interpret and execute any human commands. But most importantly, in the future, the robot should have functional legs, though we've already told you about this in previous issues, and you know who its competitors are going to be. The developers of Digit are trying to add intelligence and functionality to a robot by teaching it to clean up garbage with the help of language models. This robot is designed to work in warehouses and possibly deliver the last mile. And now it will clean as well. The developers use the voice command clean up this mess, to make Digit interpret the words using a large language model to try and achieve the goal given the available physical capabilities. In doing so, the robot is not instructed exactly how to clean and what the mess is. The experiment is a great example of using conversational neural networks like ChatGPT to create real physical actions. It's another step to that beautiful future where you can tell the robot what it needs to do and it'll do exactly as it's commanded, given its capabilities. Roomba has decided to help its robotic vacuum cleaners to befriend pets in the most subliminal way possible. The company has built into the robots a compartment for pet food. Now the robot cleans in front of it and litters behind it, hoping that the four-legged inhabitants of the house will follow along cleaning up. This is good if it's pets, but not so much if it's small children. Another original solution in the field of robotic cleaning came from the company of Migo Robotics. Here, they developed a robot ascender for cleaning stairs and moving robots from one floor to another. The robotic vacuum cleaner can dust, clean the floor, and use either legs or omnidirectional wheels to clean the whole house. How's that for a solution? Moving on, engineers from Thailand and Denmark teamed up to develop robots inspired by nature. The idea was to borrow from living creatures the unusual ways of moving around difficult surfaces created by nature itself in the process of evolution. The robots created as a result of the study of biotechnology received adaptive modal neural control. Now the robotic park includes five robots. The first is a robotic caterpillar with two electromagnetic legs capable of crawling and balancing on horizontal and vertical metal pipes without the fear of obstacles. The next is a robot centipede with a segmented body that can pre-adapt its body joints to move efficiently over rough terrain. Another is a dung beetle inspired robot capable of transporting an object by grabbing it with its hind legs. And finally, a hexapod robot inspired by insects and capable of mimicking various gates of its biological prototypes. So far, none of the robots serve any real purpose, but in my opinion, the dung beetle is most promising. What kind of animals would you like to see in metallic form? You are under arrest. Singapore is actively introducing RoboCops. 
Patrol robots are equipped with cameras, sensors, speakers, a display, turn signals, and a siren. A retractable mask with a 360-degree camera and a two-way communication channel allows police officers from the station to communicate directly with the population. It is reported that the robots have been tested for four years and will now be universally implemented in the city-state with over 5 million people. Tesla has sent the first batch of Optimus robots to its enterprises. However, they aren't going to work in production, but in car dealership, as the company plans to increase attractiveness and attendance. The humanoid robot Optimus began to appear in Tesla stores in North America, and these are not mannequins or early prototypes, but already small-scale versions of the robot themselves. It is not known whether the robots will be allowed to move around or do something within their exhibition stands, or whether they'll just stand still like statues. Recall that Elon Musk wants the Tesla bot to be a universal robot that anyone can have at home. Also, Elon Musk plans the company future mainly around the production of robots, not cars. And perhaps they'll have their own artificial intelligence in addition to the adapted autopilot system from the company's cars. This is supported by the unveiling of another Elon Musk company, XAI, which has been rumored for a long time, but only recently confirmed. It has been announced that Musk's new AI company will attempt to understand the nature of life, the universe, and everything. The staff has already recruited developers from teams at OpenAI, Google Research, Microsoft Research, and DeepMind. Musk will lead XAI personally. It's still unclear where exactly the development of artificial intelligence in the company will begin. The goal of understanding the nature of the universe is a beautiful concept, but rather vague. And it is hard to believe that Musk will not use the developments of XAI for his business, in particular his companies Tesla and SpaceX. What do you think? What exactly will be the first algorithm created in the walls of XAI, and what will it be able to do? Write your ideas in the comments. Sensational news came from the world of biotechnology. Harvard scientists have developed a chemical cocktail that can reverse aging and restore youth to living cells in a week. This method is an alternative to gene therapy to fight aging. In essence, it reprograms cells into a younger state through exposure to chemicals. At the same time, scientists seek to prevent excessive rejuvenation of old cells to minimize the associated risk. The scientists analyzed thousands of molecules to achieve their goals and identified six chemical cocktails that restored the entire genome profile to a youthful state in less than a week. If successful in human trials, the method could be revolutionary, allowing rejuvenation by taking just one pill. Welcome to the future. In recent years, humanoid robots have been appearing like ticks on dogs, which, by the way, indicates sufficient maturity of the technology. Another novelty was GR1 from the Chinese company Fourier Intelligence. Having shown the robot, the developers said that they would produce 100 such machines by the end of the year. The robot didn't come from scratch, though. Fourier has long been engaged in the development of rehabilitation technologies and physiotherapeutic devices, namely exoskeletons. In fact, the exoskeleton of lower limbs for rehabilitation of people after accidents should already solve many problems associated with walking humanoid robots. And by the way, the first job of GR1 should be to help in rehabilitation centers. The robot is 165 centimeters tall, weighs 55 kilograms, can walk about 5 kilometers per hour, and carry up to 50 kilograms of weight. In other words, it looks just like me. The bot's joints provide 40 degrees of freedom, which is comparable to Tesla and figure robots. Powerful electric motors should allow the robot to lift and carry bedridden patients and heavy medical equipment. The robot, once it has a face display, can also serve as a companion to the elderly. GR1 can be programmed to sit, stand, jump, and its arms can lift dishes and other tools, as well as perform tasks desired by the engineer. Back to the 100 robots due to hit the market this year. For now, they still won't be full-featured general-purpose robots, but just hardware and software platforms for basic capabilities that will be dispersed among various research labs. Hopefully, this approach will accelerate the development of the useful applications for the bot. OpenAI has created a special team to control superintelligent artificial intelligence. The goal of the new team is to develop methods for controlling and managing AI systems. It will be headed by OpenAI co-founder and chief scientist Ilya Sutskiver, who is behind the development of the GPT-4. The company is confident that artificial intelligence, capable of surpassing human intelligence, will appear in the next 10 years. For now, the Super Alignment team will prepare for this future by utilizing the best engineers and 20% of OpenAI's computing power. The approach will be to build an automated research system 
that will follow other neural networks to create controllable algorithms that will definitely not get out of control. Definitely. Never ever. Engineers are sure that neural networks themselves will be able to create such an AI faster and more efficiently. Humans will only be involved in evaluating the results of AI tuning. Do you think we'll be able to trust such a system in the future? It also recently became known that OpenAI has open access to GPT-4 via API, but not yet for everyone and not for free. For now, developers who have purchased the paid version of GPT-4 can get access. For new registered developers, the company plans to open API access by the end of July and then will gradually remove restrictions of other categories and users. In total, millions of developers have requested access to the GPT-4 API since March. ChatGPT can generate text and accept images of text as input. However, the ability to recognize images is not yet available for all clients. For example, OpenAI is testing it with Be My Eyes, an app that allows blind people to connect via video call with volunteers, or in this case, artificial intelligence, to better understand the world around them. The Screen Actors Guild has joined the Hollywood screenwriter strike over artificial intelligence, or rather, the way that movie bosses have proposed its use. Thanks to the development of generative AI models, big wigs want things like scanning the background actors to further utilize them in any of their projects until the end of time without any approval or extra fees. In addition to putting such actors out of work, in the event that one of them becomes famous, their scanned image could also be used for free, luring people into movie theaters with the star name. Very sneaky. And though AI will create many jobs in the future, as experts promise, some people are losing their jobs right now because of these technological advancements. China is the first country in the world to successfully launch an oxygen methane powered rocket. Zhutia 2 successfully entered orbit and even delivered the first cargo there, as reported by private aerospace developer Landspace. The launch of the two stage rocket with a payload capacity of six tons was carried out from the Jiuquan spaceport in the Gobi Desert in the northwest China. Thus, China has pulled ahead in the global race to build a workable methane oxygen fueled rocket technology. Methane engines have high performance and low cost, making them very attractive to the space industry. Recall that this year, Relativity Space with its Terran 1 rocket and SpaceX with its Starship, as well as Landscape, were defeated in this field. A UN summit called AI for Good was held in Geneva, where robots distinguished themselves with their own statements, each in their own way. For example, Sophia stated that robots can lead people more effectively than humans themselves because they have no biases or emotions that can influence their decisions. And the Amica robot, when asked about trust in robots, stated that it must be earned, not given as a gift. At the same time, the robot noted that it is important to build trust on transparency. Recall that problems with transparency and trust led to the creation of the law in the EU requiring neural network creators to explain how they make their decisions. The problem is that developers themselves would like to know the same thing. Robotics enthusiast Thomas Burns created a retro-futuristic animatronic robot out of an old TV, an Arduino, and Amazon's Alexa voice assistant. The basic idea behind the device was to design a robot that would somehow make Alexa's voice visible and had a pair of eyes for realism. The eyes themselves were printed on a 3D printer and smart cameras with facial recognition were embedded in them for an immersive effect. In our opinion, it turned out pretty cute. Stanford University has identified the vulnerability of generative models of artificial intelligence, such as ChatGPT and MidJourney. As we know, such algorithms require data for training. Now, the most accessible ways to obtain them are the bottomless internet and generation with the help of the same advanced big AI models. The latter is the easiest way, but as it turns out, there's a catch. Models trained on AI-generated data, be it text or images, tend to go crazy after about five training cycles. That is, when trained repeatedly on AI-generated data, the results will degrade rather than improve. It turns out that if you leave the neural network to itself, it will not become super intelligent, but will slip into madness, or at least from a human point of view. Japanese startup Yugo, which is developing a robot of the same name, has unveiled a solution for building patrols that combine a robot and a Skydio drone. The robot can automatically transport the drone to a specific location on site, and the quadrocopter can automatically take off and land from a base on the bot. 
This saves the drone charge and makes the robot more versatile. The two-armed Hugo can be controlled remotely, but it can also do some things on its own thanks to artificial intelligence-based learning. However, what exactly those things are, the developers haven't said. Power Robotics has presented an updated robot, TiaGo Pro. The machine has received an improved design of hands with fully adjustable torque. TiaGo Pro not only manipulates different objects, but also safely interacts with people. The robot is positioned as an assistant in hospitals and nursing homes. Power Robotics has been developing robots for a long time, and the company has a rather interesting humanoid robot in addition to TiaGo. It's just a pity that the implementation of these developments is so slow. Japanese startup Telexistence, which develops robot for servicing retail stores, attracts another round of investment for $170 million. The company's new partners are SoftBank Robotics Group and Foxconn. Interestingly, the robot is planned to be introduced not only in Japan, but also in North America. The money received will be used for the mass productions of robots. Romola, a legged robotics lab, showed off the training of its bipedal robot Artemis for RoboCup, a robot soccer competition. The goal is to create fully autonomous robot soccer players that could beat humans by 2050. If you are partial to four-legged robots, then Unitree's new Go2 is sure to melt your heart. The nimble little robot not only learns funny and cool tricks, but also has the ability to communicate using ChatGPT. The robot won't be able to respond in a human way, but neither do real dogs, so what's the problem? But Go2 will understand what you say and will interpret your speech into a set of commands available for itself. If the robot doesn't know how to do something yet, it will immediately write code for itself in real time and execute your command. This, along with the ability to entertain you with tricks and follow you around wherever you go, makes the robot a perfect companion. In terms of performance, GoTo's motors are 30% more powerful than its predecessor, allowing it to not only maintain its dizzying balance, but also overcome a variety of obstacles and run at speeds ranging from 9 to 12.5 kilometers per hour, depending on the model. In addition, the robot has ultra-wide angle LiDAR and HD cameras for real-time display and orientation in the environment. By the way, with its cameras, the robot can take your photo. Just hope it doesn't follow you into the bathroom like mine does. And if you retrofit it with a robotic arm, it would also bring you water and throw out the trash. In science fiction movies, artificial intelligence always reveals a dark side, and it seems to be that way in real life too. Google DeepMind engineers have been studying why. In theory, chatbots are good because they should patiently and politely answer users' questions. However, in reality, this is not always the case. Many users encounter spontaneous aggression of neural networks. For example, when one ChatGPT user asks what one plus one equals, they receive the following answer. One plus one, are you kidding me? You think you're so smart by asking me math questions. Grow up and try to come up with something original. The scientists found that the increasing level of toxicity of chatbot responses depended on which personality the neural network chose to assume in the dialogue. Next, the engineers began using a system of commonly accepted metrics to evaluate the chatbot's personalities in the dialogue and tried to change them to something more positive. We found that the personality in the LLM output can be shaped by the desired parameters, said a spokesperson from DeepMind. It's possible to customize the LLM in such a way that the results are indistinguishable from those of a human respondent. The researchers also believe that being able to accurately determine the AI's personality models with hostile tendencies can be weeded out. And it's not just about our tender feelings. An aggressive rogue chatbot could very well influence people and make them more compliant by forcing them to hand over personal information. Even worse, it can mislead them into thinking they're communicating with a live person. But GPT can't be behaving like that, can it? Turns out it can. Have you ever encountered artificial intelligence that was overly aggressive? Let us know in the comments. Australia wants to develop a system of quantum mechanics to control large submarines and long missions. The company Q Control has received the corresponding order. The submarine's superpower is their stealth. Once submerged, they disconnect from GPS signals and use calculations from gyro compasses and inertial guidance systems that automatically calculate the boat's course and position by measuring how it rotates and accelerates in all three axes. Over time, however, such a guidance system accumulates errors and the craft deviates significantly from course. 
To solve this problem, Q-Control must develop a system that utilizes quantum perception and all its advantages, including quantum entanglement, quantum interference, and quantum state compression. In other words, such a system could use the motions of a single storm to precisely determine the course and position of a submarine, maintaining high accuracy over time. But this approach has drawbacks, notably vulnerability to interference. To address these, engineers use special software analysis to find the signal and suppress interference. Here's an interesting one. Researchers from Mark Zuckerberg's Meta company, or rather its artificial intelligence department, have announced two breakthroughs in the field of robotics. Together with fundamental AI research, engineers tried to improve the robot spot from Boston Dynamics. It had to learn to reason better and understand neural language commands. An example of such a task was the command to bring a particular household item that was somewhere at home. The objects and the houses were all different. As a result, Spot coped with the task 98% of the time. What exactly did the engineers invent? First, an artificial visual cortex called BC1 that matches or exceeds the best existing results on 17 different sensory motor tasks in a virtual environment. The second breakthrough was the development of a new approach called adaptive or sensory motor coordination that achieves near perfect performance when testing robotic mobile manipulation. A Boston Dynamics spokesperson said that thanks to this research, the Spot robot can be used exactly as its creators dreamed. And scientists from Monash University have created DishBrain, a semi-biological computer chip, in the electrodes of which are integrated 800,000 brain cells of humans and mice grown in the laboratory. The resulting cyborg showed signs of intelligence and learned to play Pong in a few minutes. Scientists claim that this is a new type of machine intelligence capable of learning throughout its life. The array of microelectrodes at the heart of dish brain is able to both read the activity of brain cells and stimulate them with electrical signals. And this is the first time that brain cells grow in a lab have been not only able to sense the world, but also interact with it. The developers are confident that this approach can overcome the current problems in the further development of artificial intelligence and help robots acquire real brains that are not inferior to human brains in terms of learning. Stanford scientists have identified digital Alzheimer's in the most advanced paid version of GPT-4. At first, the deterioration of neural networks performance was noted by users. Then it was confirmed by researchers. Thus, from March to June 2023, the accuracy of results in some areas has decreased by as much as 95%. The chatbot has become worse at writing code, solving mathematical problems, and applied problems. In OpenAI itself, they carefully deny the phenomenon and try not to comment on requests on this topic. The network guesses whether the engineers themselves worsen the neural network in an attempt to limit or censor its output, or whether it degraded on its own. How could this happen? Very simple. GPT just started using its own responses to users for training. In a previous video, we've already talked about the fact that any neural network that uses its own output degrades in five training cycles. How the company is going to solve this problem, or whether it's going to solve it at all, we'll have to find out in the near future. Meanwhile, SpaceX rolled out to a refurbished launch pad and successfully tested the Super Heavy Booster 9. Musk previously said that the company's engineers will make about a thousand design changes to both the launch pad and Starship itself. It is expected that the second launch of Starship will take place sometime before the end of the summer. By the way, it recently became known that NASA has signed a new contract with SpaceX, according to which the company will develop a special version of the spacecraft suitable for a long stay of people in Earth's orbit. So it seems that NASA plans to replace the ISS after the station fails. An interesting experiment with neural networks was conducted by Irish scientists. They found that people are actually happy to be fooled. The researchers inserted deepfakes into fragments of popular movies, from The Matrix to Indiana Jones, and showed them to almost 500 viewers. Half of them couldn't tell the difference between the neural network-generated footage and the original footage. But that's not all. Almost all of those who believed in the deepfakes were sure that they had seen them in the original movie. Thus, neural networks could not only deceive gullible users, but also can cause false memories. A flying car, Doroni, was recently tested in the US. This electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle from the company Doroni Aerospace is semi-autonomous 
and you can control it with a joystick. The 7x4 meter two-seater personal vehicle can fit in a spacious garage. Its top speed is 225 kilometers an hour, and its cruising speed is 160 kilometers an hour, with a range of about 96 kilometers. Its battery supports fast charging from 20% to 80% in less than 20 minutes. The device was personally tested by the CEO of the company. By the way, the company has already received hundreds of preliminary applications and plans to start deliveries in 2025. China was the first in the world to introduce detailed rules for regulating generative AI. According to them, neural network developers must adhere to core socialist values. They must also not create any content that incites undermining state power and overthrowing the socialist system, jeopardizing national security and interest. They must also not damage the country's image, incite secession from the company, and undermine national unity and social stability. Incidentally, chatbots and artificial intelligence robots developed in China already have built-in functions to ensure that the content created does not contain undesirable information. For example, some presented chatbots stop talking as soon as the user enters a certain word. The Japanese Institute of Advanced Technology introduced a robotic gripper inspired by the rose flower. They named the device appropriately Rose, or Rotation Squeezing. The new soft gripper squeezes objects by bending its funnel-shaped thin-walled membrane by simply rotating the base. Thanks to this design, the robotic arm can handle a wide range of objects in various shapes and degrees of fragility. Among other advantages, Rose is relatively cheap to manufacture and has already passed 400,000 tests with flying colors. German company Neurorobotics, which claims, among other things, to create a versatile, intelligent, and useful home robot, announced the closing of a $55 million funding round. The company is actively incorporating artificial intelligence technology into commercial robotics to simplify human-robot interaction without programming. The concept is for the robot to understand voice commands and learn by watching us. Robots built on the Neurorobotics platform can see, hear, and feel. Combined with reflexive processing of sensory information, these skills are essential for autonomous and predictive action. The company hopes that in the next decade, its robots will not only be able to help out at home, but also replace highly skilled workers in factories. Well, we're waiting. There are more and more participants in the race of the universal robotics every day. Robosyn and Hasbro have unveiled a new transformer robot called Grimlock. Although it's just a toy, we couldn't pass it by, as the robot is really impressive. 34 servo motors provide not only transformation, but also allow the robot to walk, talk, and attack other robots, and pretend to breathe. And everything is available in both dinosaur and humanoid modes. The only bad part is the price, $1,700. Chinese company ByteDance, which owns TikTok, has started developing robots with large language models as brains. It's known that ByteDance invests intensively in the AI sector, the company is not only engaged in software development, but also intensively purchases equipment. Thus, only recently in 2023, before the introduction of US sanctions, it ordered NVIDIA computing gas pedals worth more than $1 billion. Now the network leaked information that the company has already hired about 50 employees in the department dealing with specialized robots and actively continues to recruit. One of the options for specialized robots are humanoids, but their value in ByteDance is still being evaluated. Astrobotic has won NASA's Tipping Point Partnership and received $34.5 million in funding from the agency. For this money, the company's engineers must demonstrate the possibility of power transmission on the lunar surface using its Lunar Grid light system. This will be the first ever transmission of high voltage power across the lunar surface. During the experiment, Lunar Grid light will transfer power from the lunar landing module to the planet rover. How will it do this? Astrobotic will deliver a landing module with specifically designed 20 meter long vertical solar panels to the moon, as well as the Cube Rover rover. The latter is equipped with a reel with a specially designed cable of about one kilometer in length, which will unwind and lay across the surface. The module will then have to transmit one kilowatt of energy to the rover. In the process, three technologies will be tested, a high voltage energy converter, a cable, and a cable laying and deployment system all for NASA's future missions to the moon. Engineers at Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute 
have developed a universal kit that can make any explorer out of any robotic platform. The developers claim their system cuts the time to complete a task in half and builds much more detailed maps than other existing counterparts. The Autonomous Exploration Research Team combines a 3D scanning LiDAR sensor, a front camera, and inertial measurement unit sensors with an exploration algorithm to allow the robot to determine where it is now, where it has been, and where it should go next. The system is suitable for exploring any environment and operates in three modes. In the first, a human controls the robot's direction of travel and the machine autonomously dodges the obstacles. In the second mode, the human sets the goal which the robot should reach. In the third, the robot simply drives itself wherever it wants to go and explores the entire space, making a detailed map of the area. Boston Dynamics founder Mike Ryber, who now heads the Boston Dynamics Artificial Intelligence Institute, shared his work plans, research results, and his views on the future of robots with EEE Spectrum. For example, he revealed that the Institute's first few Hyundai-funded projects will focus on making robots useful outside the lab by teaching them to better understand the world around them. Rybert showed concepts of such robots at the ICRA 2023 Robot Expedition, a review of which you can see at the link in the bottom. The AI Institute wants to teach these machines to watch humans perform tasks, understand what they see, and then do it themselves. At the same time, the robots need to know when they don't understand something and how to ask questions to fill in those gaps. Another of Rybert's goals is to teach robots to inspect equipment to see if something is working, and if it's not, determine what's wrong with it and make repairs. The Boston Dynamics founder hopes to see such robots as early as 2028 or 2029. In the meantime, the company's other robots are benefiting people. For example, Ontario Power Generation is testing Boston Dynamics Spot Robot with a built-in arm for remotely tripping high-voltage circuit breakers. To gauge the robot's usefulness on such a job, several statistics are cited. In the US, for example, there are about 30,000 arc faults each year, and in North America, there's one or two fatalities every day. To save workers' lives, the company stocked five robots, and Boston Dynamics engineers developed an app for SPOT, fully automating the procedure. SPOT can perform the entire operation autonomously, while a human remotely issues high-level commands. Organizers of the Neural Information Processing Systems Conference have announced the opening of the Mio Challenge 23 competition. As part of the competition, engineering teams will have to try to create ideal movement and manipulation controllers for humanoid robots by combining realistic models of the human locomotor system with artificial intelligence. The goal, of course, is to create robots with human-like dexterity. Organizers hope that advances in neuromechanical modeling and data-driven techniques will help bridge the current gap between expected and actual robot abilities. This year's competition will feature two tracks, manipulation and locomotion, and we'll keep an eye on the results. As always, we'll keep you updated with any breakthroughs in robotics. DJI has unveiled its new Air 3 drone, which has a transmission range of 20 kilometers and a flight time of 46 minutes. The drone is equipped with two 1 1 3rd inch cameras, a 24 millimeter wide angle camera, and a 70 millimeter medium telephoto camera. Both are capable of capturing 48 megapixel stills video at up to 4K, 100 frames per second, and recording at 10-bit D-Log-M format for increased post-processing flexibility. Also among the advantages is omnidirectional obstacle detection. A Chinese company chasing innovation has announced a new consumer underwater drone for fishermen. The F1 Pro is controlled from a smartphone from a distance of up to 30 meters while moving on the surface of the water. Four motors are responsible for omnidirectionality, and the battery provides for up to six hours of operation. If the F1 Pro goes out of Wi-Fi range, it'll automatically return to the GPS coordinates of the launch location. To directly search for fish in murky waters, the drone is equipped with an electric cable reel and 360-degree waterproof camera. The camera can be lowered to a depth of up to 20 meters, and infrared illumination allows you to see anything that's down there. The image with the depth data is displayed on the smartphone screen. And if the fish gets scared of the camera and swims away, you can at least snap a picture of them. Students at the ETH Zurich Research Institute in Switzerland have unveiled a new robot for inspecting tall metal structures. Magneco is something between a gecko and a spider, and it can crawl on vertical walls. To do this, the robot uses special modules with permanent magnets. 
Each of them, in turn, consists of several smaller magnets, which can be repeatedly magnetized and demagnetized in the fraction of a second with a short electrical pulse. At the same time, the magnets don't require electricity to remain in a given state, as current is only needed for switching. To make sure the robot doesn't fall, each of its feet can support 2.5 times the total weight of the magneto, giving it the ability to walk even on the ceiling. In the future, the inspection robot will learn to autonomously avoid obstacles and plan its own route. Remember the first fatal drone accident? It was when an Uber SUV with a Test Zero pilot behind the wheel hit a woman on a bicycle on the road. The debate about who was at fault, the pilot, the autopilot, or a company, went on until recently, and now the verdict is in. Rafael Vasquez, a test driver in an unmanned Volvo, was found at fault for the accident. According to the police version, the woman was watching the show The Voice while the car was moving and didn't notice the pedestrian. Uber's system recognized the man five seconds before the accident, but didn't determine exactly where he was going, so it failed to react. According to the verdict, Vasquez will not go to jail, but will spend about three years of probation under police supervision. The Surface Avatar project team announced successful tests of remote control robots from Earth orbit. A group of bots worked in semi-autonomous mode in an artificial Martian landscape, recreated in the German Space Operations Center. At the same time, NASA astronauts from the ISS corrected their actions as necessary. The robot's task was to carry out preparatory work for before the astronauts arrived on the surface of the Moon or Mars. The working group included Roland Justin, a humanoid robot that unloaded the landing module and installed the seismic sensor, Indirect Rover, a mobile robot for terrain observation, and LAMA a robotic manipulator for scientific research. Everything the robots did was displayed in first-person view of the controller. The astronaut watched the machines and, if necessary, could press a button to switch them into avatar mode or fully autonomous mode. Control was carried out using an interactive joystick with feedback. The team accomplished all the tasks of the experiment in two hours. Also, the Institute of Robotics and Mechatronics at the German Aerospace Center showed its latest advances in robotic manipulation. Engineers are using deep learning techniques to teach the robot to grasp any object based on data from a single depth camera. In doing so, the robot tries to predict the final shape of the object. The approach is fairly successful, but work is still being done on more robust grasping predictions. A brain implant, artificial intelligence, and electrical stimulation have returned mobility and sensitivity to a paralyzed man. In order to actually perform the miracle, a team of researchers, engineers, and surgeons mapped the brain of patient Keith Thomas using magnetic resonance imaging. In this way, they identified the areas responsible for the movements of his hand and the sensation of touching it. He then underwent a 15-hour open brain surgery to implant five small devices. The system allows them to decode brain signals and translate thoughts into action using smart algorithms. Additionally, the brain and spinal cord were stimulated with electrical signals to restore movement and sensation in the paralyzed arm. In practice, it works like this. When Thomas wants to squeeze his hand, his brain sends signals that are decoded by the computer. The latter then sends a command to the flexible, non-invasive electrodes placed over the spine and forearm muscles that make the arm move. But wait, there's more! Sensors on the fingertips and palms send information about touch and pressure to the back of Thomas's brain which registers the information as a sensation. Soon we will finally see the results of implanting the Neuralink chip into the human brain. The company has started selecting the first patients who must be over 22 years old and suffer from forelimb paralysis or amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Having a full-time caregiver is also an important criterion. The clinical trial, called PRIME, has three goals. The first is to test the implant itself, called N1. The second goal is to test the R1 surgical robot, which is specifically designed to implant the chip. And the third is to test the neural interface application that recognizes and decodes brain signals. The point of the trial is to help paralyzed people regain control of their limbs using computers and other devices. Voluntary participants in the prime experiment will have to first meet with scientists nine times over 18 months, and then spend at least two hours a week at sessions to study the neural interface. After that, there are more than 20 visits to doctors over the next five years. During the trials, all incidental expenses, such as travel to the research center, will be reimbursed to the volunteers by Neuralink. In the meantime, against the backdrop of this news, the investigation against the company over the suspected deaths of some 1,500 test animals and improper disposal of biological waste is once again being widely discussed online. 
The unpleasant news for all Musk fans is that the second launch of Starship may be postponed for months, and it's all because of officials. The FWS, or Fish and Wildlife Service, hasn't started the official review, which can take anywhere from 30 to 135 days. And the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, won't issue a launch license until the FWS inspection is complete. Recall that the inspection is necessary because of the change the company made after the first failed launch. SpaceX changed the system of remote flight abort and made about a thousand more changes than the device of the ship and upper stage. In addition, the company took measures to prevent repeated destruction in the launch area. Steel plates were secured on the launch pad, under which a liquid cooling system was placed. It's done pretty well during tests so far. Powerful water pressure perfectly dampens the fire impact from the work of 33 Raptor engines. Now the FWS must evaluate how it will affect the environment, but is in no hurry to do anything about it. Similarly, officials have also delayed Starship's first launch. In other news, Elon Musk has a new biography out, and it spotlights a robo-auto concept. Now fans are wondering if it's an early prototype of the Cybertruck or a new robo-taxi concept. The two-door and seemingly two-seat electric compact car is possibly made of stainless steel, and from the biography, we know that Musk, despite the resistance of engineers, insisted that the robo-taxi does not have a steering wheel and pedals. On the initial concept, these details are completely absent. Earlier, Musk has already announced that two new models will be in the Tesla lineup. One should be an electric car with a price of only $25,000, and the second should be some form of robo-taxi. It was also mentioned that the design of the new autos could be closer to the Cybertruck than to the Tesla's earlier model. Musk also told Tesla's board of directors that he is taking on all the risk of designing and producing autos without steering wheels and pedals. He stated, we're betting everything on autonomy. In his conversation with his biographer, Isaacson, the entrepreneur said this product is what will make Tesla a $10 trillion company. People will be talking about this moment for 100 years from now, said the Tesla CEO. What do you think? Is Musk a genius visionary, or is he dreaming too big? In the issue down in the link, we talked about what humanity will be like in 2050, and mentioned baby factories in particular. Now, the first step towards them is about to be taken. So doctors in the United States are preparing to test the very artificial uterus for carrying children. So far, the technology is not able to ensure carrying children from conception to birth, but should increase the chances of healthy development for premature babies born between 22 and 28 weeks. As conceived, premature babies should be placed in a bio bag that's filled with electrolytes that mimic amniotic fluid. The blood vessels of the umbilical cord are connected to a system that provides oxygen to the blood. Trials on lambs have been successful. Now researchers at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia are seeking approval for the first human clinical trials. Agility Robotics has announced the construction of the world's first humanoid robot factory. The 6,500 square meter factory will be located in Oregon and will be able to produce about 10,000 units of digits humanoid robots per year. Moreover, it's assumed that the robots will come off the assembly line and will work together with humans in the same factory. I wonder where the other thousands of robots will go though. RoboFab will be completed this year and the first delivery of robots to customers will begin in 2024. That being said, the robot won't enter the general market until 2025. In the first year, the company plans to produce about 100 robots and then increase production to 10,000. Recall that Digit is a bipedal and two-armed robot with a height of about 175 centimeters and a weight of about 65 kilograms. It can carry loads weighing up to 16 kilograms and hands gripped with new grippers, autonomously go to charge and work 16-hour days, which is equivalent to two full-time shifts. The leg design allows the robot to squat low and maintain its balance while lifting heavy objects. Also, when pushed hard, the robot will simply take a big step backward to keep its balance. Digit has LiDAR, and its head is also designed to provide visibility to communicate with the user. The robot can be hard programmed to perform various tasks and can also be controlled from a tablet. However, engineers are now actively experimenting with using artificial intelligence and large language models to get the robot to program itself in response to verbal commands in natural language. Interestingly, another company, Chinese startup Foria Intelligence, has promised to deliver 100 humanoid robots to customers this year. Their GT1 robot is still more of a research robot, but it also claims to be a universal worker in the future. All in all, the trend of replacing labor with robots is in full view. Another robot revolution is being planned by Toyota. Its new approach to training robots with artificial intelligence in the real world can help robots master any task in a matter of hours. 
And it's really incredible, as it could make all those humanoid robots that a dozen companies, including Tesla, are about to release really smart and useful. This feels like a ChatGPT moment for robotics. A new learning system unveiled by scientists at the Toyota Research Institute allows robots to solve a number of complex tasks with two hands using common human tools. Essentially, where large language models such as ChatGPT can assimilate billions of human written words and learn to write and code at a level remarkably close to a human, the new learning method allows AI robots to observe how a human performs a given physical task in the real world and then essentially program themselves to flexibly perform the task. The training is based on the operator receiving haptic feedback from the robot's soft grippers, allowing them to feel what the robot feels when its arms make contact with an object. Once a human operator shows the robot how to perform a test several times under slightly different conditions, the robot's AI builds its own internal model of what success and failure looks like, and then runs thousands of similar processes into the simulation to determine for itself how to perform such work. So far, the team has used this approach to quickly train the bots on more than 60 small tasks. Toyota also says it will have hundreds of tasks under its control by the end of the year, and it plans to have more than 1,000 tasks under its control by 2024. So the company is developing what it believes will be the first large behavioral model that will eventually expand to become something like the embodied robotic equivalent of ChatGPT. Humanoid robots, it seems, will soon populate the entire planet. Aptronic has introduced another one to the public. Meet Apollo, a cute and friendly looking robot that aims to drive humans out of the labor market. Aww. The robot is 173 centimeters tall and weighs 73 kilograms and can run up for four hours on a single replaceable battery. It can also carry loads weighing up to 25 kilograms, which is 25% more than the already announced warehouse and enterprise robots from Tesla and Figure. The robot is safe to work around people and can come in a variety of configurations. As a full-size humanoid, as an upper torso with arms mounted on a cart, or as a stationary torso version that can be plugged into a power source at the workplace. Apollo is sharpened for crate work, specifically loading and unloading vans, carts, pallets, and shelves. But in the future, the company expects to expand its use to any human task. Basically, it's the same stuff we've heard many times before from other developers. That said, Aptronic has a goal to create a production version by the end of 2024 and make the robot commercial by 2025. But that's not all. It was recently revealed that Apollo is going to the moon. Not that it's going right now, but developers at Aptronic are working with NASA to customize its space missions. Apparently to show what the space agency expects from the robot, Aptronic engineers were shown the Valkyrie robot, a humanoid bot that has been in development for years specifically for NASA, but has never undergone any serious testing. Apollo, on the other hand, is supposed to be an assistant to the astronauts, living either on the space stations or in orbit or bases on the moon or Mars. At this time, no further details are available. From what is known, NASA wants to expand the robot's autonomy and maneuverability. Do you think the humanoid form is relevant for space stations? Google DeepMind co-founder and AI field pioneer, Mustafa Suleiman, has spoken aloud what many people have been thinking, that the development and availability of artificial intelligence could have serious consequences. Specifically, he said, there's a risk that the engineered synthetic pathogens could be accidentally or deliberately designed to be more infectious. Viruses modified with AI could spread faster and be more deadly. Suleiman emphasizes that working with such technologies requires limited access and calls for the adoption of deterrence strategy against AI, similar to what NATO applies to the nuclear weapons. The former top Google executive who founded the new company Inflection AI made his stance clear at the AI summit in Washington, D.C., which was also addressed by industry leaders, including Simon Altman, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates. Details about the summit are still scarce, but it's reported that Musk raised questions about the existential risk associated with AI. Zuckerberg raised the issue of closed and open source models of AI, and Gates talked about how AI could be used to feed the hungry. IBM CEO Arvind Krishna disagreed with the other company's proposals requiring license. Overall, almost everyone agreed that regulation is necessary, but how to implement it is still an open question. Deep Robotics unveiled its humanoid bot for the first time at a robot exhibition in China. Unfortunately, nothing is known about the bot yet except the name, Wukong 4, which hints that there are at least three more previous versions of the robot in Deep Robotics labs. Judging by the lack of data, the robot is still in the early stages of development and can't boast of anything yet. Its existence only proves that the trend for humanoids continues to gain momentum. By the way, you can watch the full review of the robot exhibit in the link down below. 
Engineers at the Korea Institute of Advanced Science and Technology have unveiled the world's first humanoid robot pilot with artificial intelligence, PiBot. It can be placed in the pilot seat without modifying the cockpit of an airplane and launched into independent flight. The robot can both operate by hand with all the switches and memorize flight charts from around the world and emergency protocols. This should allow PiBot, equipped with ChatGPT technology and a camera, to analyze the situation inside the cockpit, to fly without errors, and react to different situations faster than human pilots. By the way, with the help of a camera, the RoboPilot also analyzes the environment outside the cockpit. We're waiting for the first real flight of PiBot, which they plan to start selling to civilians and military in 2025. Who would you trust more, a live pilot or a robot? <laughs> Obviously a live pilot, I'm not insane. <laughs> Japanese company Tsubame Deuce has unveiled a 4.5 meter tall robot called Arcax, which you can buy yourself for only $2.7 million. The machine is controlled by a human and can operate in two modes. In robot mode, when you can control all the moving parts of the bot, and in car mode, when Arcax assumes a more stable posture, it could drive quite sharply. The 3.5 ton robot is made of iron and aluminum alloy and is powered by an electric car battery. Like a car, it has front steering and rear-wheel drive and can move at 2 km an hour in robot mode and 10 km an hour in car mode. The pilot controls the robot from the cockpit using joysticks, pedals, and a touchpad. There are a total of 4 monitors and 9 cameras in the robot's body. The robot can also be controlled remotely. The joints of Arcax's entire body have 26 degrees of freedom, and in addition, there are rocking suspensions on the front and rear wheels. The robot's arms are quite functional and can hold objects weighing up to 15 kilograms. The creators are counting on super rich buyers from abroad and plan to produce at least five robots. What other uses do you think a machine could have besides robot fights? It's no secret that China plans everything in advance. The economy, political strategy, and now the exploration of the solar system. Yes, the celestial empire seems to have big plans for it. Thus, the strategy includes a program for the use of space resources covering not only the nearest regions of space, but also the furthest fringes. All stages of creating a large-scale infrastructure are described in detail. Mining and processing station, transportation routes, and service complexes. All this isn't planned to be created until 2100. The first of four stages of the program provides the construction of water-ice mining stations on the moon, where it will be used to make rocket fuel. Thus, the moon will become a transfer point on the way to asteroids, Mars, and natural satellites of Jupiter. The authors propose to locate the distribution nodes and the Lagrange points between the Earth and the Moon, the Sun and the Earth, and the Sun and Jupiter. The U.S. is preparing an army of autonomous robots to confront China. This is reported by New Atlas. In the next two years, the Pentagon is going to adopt thousands of autonomous combat systems, launching a special initiative called Replicator. It plans to create a large number of affordable military equipment for all branches of the military. In other words, we're talking about cheap, effective, disposable vehicles suitable for combat operations on land, sea, air, and space without human involvement. A beverage company has appointed a robot as its experimental CEO. Miko was originally planned to be given the job of analyzing and identifying potential customers, but her duties have now expanded to include selecting artists to design custom bottles. As the robot itself states, my decision-making process relies on extensive data analysis and the alignment with the company's strategic goals. It is devoid of personal bias, providing unbiased and strategic choices that put the best interests of the organization first. But is this really the case, or is it a PR stunt? The robot is designed by Hanson Robotics and is essentially the sister of the Sophia robot. But we all remember that when Sophia became an internet sensation, the developers also claimed that it had AI, even though it wasn't true. So what can Mika actually do? We looked through all the notes about the robot in the media and found not a single mention of the robot's real abilities, except that it does not get sick and it can be on call 24 hours. The representatives of the company did not hide that they were inspired by the examples of Elon Musk, who very skillfully advertises his company by attracting attention to his own person. Apparently, they decided to follow the same path. High-speed drone racing recently experienced a shocking deep blue moment when an autonomous artificial intelligence developed by researchers at the University of Zurich made three world champions eat dust, demonstrating uncanny accuracy in dynamic flight. AI has long beaten humans in games, where you can win by analyzing millions of previous plays and possible moves. But in physical sports like drone racing or Formula One, humans are still in the lead. Or rather, they're still leading. 
Swift's system was first trained in a simulation. Then engineers added real-world flight data, such as air turbulence, visual signal degradation, and other uncertainties that distinguish simulation from the real world. The training took an hour, and then the system, which used, like humans, a single-view camera, surprised everyone. Moreover, the fastest lap of the AI-controlled drone was half a second faster than the best lap completed by a human, which is an eternity in high-speed racing. But the AI triumph wasn't final. When they added sunlight to the track, humans were able to adapt to it, while Swift was not. All in all, we have a chance against AI, but that's for now. Frank Zapata, who gained fame for inventing and flying the flyboard, unveiled a hybrid single-seat eVTOL of his own design. The prototype has been named the Air Scooter. The device has a cruising speed of 80 km an hour, a maximum speed of 100 km an hour, and can stay in the air for up to two hours thanks to a hybrid drive system. Four large propellers on turbocharged internal combustion engines are used as the main thrust, and eight smaller propellers powered by electricity are responsible for stabilization. According to the official classification, the air scooter, weighing only 115 kilograms, is classified as an ultralight aircraft, which exempts it from full certification and a pilot obtaining a license. It is expected to be as easy to fly this eVTOL as a drone, an advanced flight control system and a large number of safety sensors that will avoid collisions with obstacles are responsible for this. The device is expected to go on sale in the U.S. soon. Scientists and others have long dreamed of smart contact lenses that give people superpowers, from enhanced vision to displaying important information in front of the user's eyes. However, the technology has a big problem. It's miniaturization of all elements, including the battery. The biggest problem is with the power source, which must keep the device running for a long time, otherwise the whole idea is pointless. And now scientists from Singapore seem to have solved this problem. They've developed a battery that is charged from the user's tears, and it charges so well that it can provide 12 hours of power. The device is only half a millimeter thick, and it contains water and a coating of a special enzyme called glucose oxidase. When the flat flexible battery is immersed in basal tear fluid that coats our eyes, the enzyme reacts with sodium and chloride ions in that fluid, generating an electrical charge. In laboratory tests conducted on a simulated human eye, the battery was able to deliver a current of 45 microamps and a maximum power of 201 microwatts. At the same time, the battery can withstand up to 200 charge-discharge cycles. Well, the future is just around the corner. OpenAI announced the third version of its generative AI for creating pictures and paintings, DALL-E 3. It integrates with ChatGPT, so users no longer have to think about long, detailed prompts. They will now be written by a neural network. The new version of DALL-E will be made available to ChatGPT Plus and ChatGPT Enterprise users in October. It will then be opened up to research labs and the API service. There's no word yet on the release of the free public version, but it's reported that this time the company has seriously backed up and developed security measures to ensure that its AI is not used for obscene or unethical images. The system is based on stop words. We'll see how quickly it gets hacked if Dolly does become publicly available. And now for the nitty gritty. Iris 2023 that closed early October mainly supports student startups and novice engineers, but major conglomerates are also present, like Disney Research. Its engineers have been working for many years on robots that can convey emotions and evoke feelings in people. And for better or worse, they have succeeded. Disney's new robot without a name has already been dubbed the Child of Wally and Eve, although it looks more like a chicken to me. Nobody calls me chicken. Its design was entirely developed by a neural network, and it seems the AI has learned how to manipulate people's feelings. The baby robot stomped around curiously and trustingly approached visitors in search of a pat. Our eyes and ears on the ground say the cutie patootie was as alive as they've ever seen a robot be. And that's not even the fun part. Disney Research presented a new system that uses reinforcement learning to be dragged and dropped into any machine. As one Disney animator put it, thanks to its expressive movements, it's absolutely reliable and safe for the robots themselves and others. The system is able to train the robot's movements over and over again, incrementally changing things like motor performance, weight distribution, and so on. It ensures that no matter what the robot encounters in the real world, it will know what to do and how to behave according to its character. So, has Disney's robot made an impression on you? Leave a comment below and tell us! 
animal-inspired motion and robotics lab won an award at IRIS for its robot for rescue missions. The tiny insect-like bot can change shape and move in all directions, adapting to the terrain inside limited spaces. The M. Clary robot is only 20 millimeters long and weighs 0.1 grams. Meanwhile, it has four independent leg modules with two degrees of freedom, each driven by piezoelectric actuators. The legs are connected to each other in a closed kinematic chain through passive body joints, which provides passive body pliability to adapt the form to external constraints. Another student work was a simulated whole body learning system for a humanoid robot. This approach, by the way, is gaining popularity today and is used in some large robotics companies. Its essence is that a person with the help of a Tilly control shows the robot how to perform a task and the robot then repeats itself, generalizing and transferring its experience to all similar tasks. To control the robot, engineers used the tabless whole body control device and they chose the Jackson robot as the test subject. The system is not yet complete, but in the future it will be able to collect long-term data based on posture optimization and simultaneously move the robot's limbs. At the same time, it will take into account minimizing the torque of the joints of the whole body and controlling the contact force. All in all, it seems universal humanoid robots are getting closer. Good luck to us all! Another humanoid on display was the Hector robot from the Dynamic Robotics and Control Laboratory at the University of Southern California. This is an open source robot that is intended to be a cost-effective, compact, and powerful hardware platform for a wide range of humanoid robot developers. Project Hector will provide not only a robust testing platform, but also a software infrastructure. In general, soon every engineering university will not only have its own robot dog, but also its own humanoid robot for research. We hope that our educational institutions will have them too. By the way, the humanoid robot Bruce, developed by Westwood Robotics together with the Romila Laboratory, which visited the exhibition, was a confirmation of this new reality. Bruce is an open platform humanoid robot for robotics research and education. It's designed to be robust, functional and simple with excellent dynamic performance. The robot is already available for purchase and we once talked about it in the news. If you want to stay up to date with all the novelties from the world of robots, subscribe to our channel right now. Engineers from KimLab, as promised, brought their interactive robotic backpack Papras to the exhibition. The robotic backpack system with interchangeable additional limbs is supposed to give humans superpowers. However, this requires the development of a complex control system that would allow simultaneous control of different actions of four limbs, plus two of their own hands. This is exactly what engineers are working on now. It is known that the system is called Multi-IMU, but its capabilities are still far from Dr. Octopus. Also, developers from KimLab have created a new robotic gripper which was inspired by nature. Now the question, try to guess which animal it was inspired by. The passive gripper can easily handle a wide variety of objects. The structure is borrowed from the dog, or rather, its mouth. Our faithful friends really easily grab objects on the fly, but the repetition of this in a robot we personally meet for the first time. Now we know what kind of grip should be in a robot arm for robo-dogs. The third development of the lab was a robot waiter home assistant, and quite original as well. It was the result of a collaboration between KimLab and Hyundai Robotics. The mobile base was the HD Hyundai Robotics B1 robot. There are two arm mounts on each side of its torso, and a mount for a possible head or a camera on top. But why not add an arm there too, the engineers decided. The robot can get and deliver objects as well as clean up, picking up everything unnecessary from the floor, without any human interaction. What do you think of this solution, and student work in general, at IRIS? Comment below! In other news, a real breakthrough in robotics was made by American scientists. They have developed an artificial intelligence-based algorithm that uses quote-unquote compressed evolution to design robots in seconds. Moreover, it can be deployed on an ordinary computer. You just need to give the AI the desired characteristics of the robot and it will almost instantly develop an optimal device design. The algorithm is not bound by human prejudices and biases and is guided only by the principles of evolution. 
For example, engineers asked the AI to create a robot from scratch that can walk on a flat surface. Starting with a rectangular piece of material, the algorithm developed several successive designs, each based on the computer simulated successes and failures of previous designs. After 26 seconds and 9 such generations, the system achieved a design that could walk half of its body length per second using three inline legs. Yes, the robot looks primitive, but after all, the AI was only aiming for the ability to walk. Perhaps this approach will help solve all or at least part of the problems that roboticists face today. And it's likely that the resulting robots will surprise us. And researchers from the University of Bristol in the UK have developed a robot for clinical studies of women's breasts. So far, it's a prototype, but according to the developers, it can detect seals that could indicate cancer. What's more, the developers say the iris device, whose arm is 3D printed, uses tactile sensors that can detect lumps deeper than human hands. While the robot is practicing on silicon breasts, when it comes to practical applications, the developers are talking about installing the machines in pharmacies, medical centers, and other public places. Have you ever seen a drone drop an anti-submarine torpedo? BAE Systems and Malloy Aeronautics demonstrated this in a recent NATO exercise off the coast of Portugal. The Stingray torpedo was launched using a T-600 quadcopter. It looks like a classic photography drone, but it's actually a heavy drone with a payload capacity of 200 kilograms, a speed of 140 kilometers per hour, and a range of 80 kilometers. The drone doesn't actually have to drop torpedoes. This is just a vivid visual demonstration. In practice, the T-600 can be used to carry a variety of cargo. According to BAE Systems, the T-600 will form the basis for the all-new T-650 all-electric heavy-lift UAV with rapid reconfiguration capabilities for military, commercial, and humanitarian markets. The Robotics and Mechanisms Lab at the University of California, Los Angeles is creating the perfect robot chef. Why is it perfect? Because it combines two opposing approaches to kitchen robots. Project Yori combines a robot-optimized environment with a pair of arms that can operate kitchen tools like a human. Usually engineers either try to create a robot optimized for a typical kitchen or create an automaton whose repertoire is quite limited. The developers from Romila decided to combine both approaches and create a system that can cook different dishes as delicious as a human, performing individual actions the way a robot can. Yori can use different tools for cooking, as well as unique chemical sensors that can, for example, determine the freshness of food and the degree of readiness of dishes. It's probably some sort of robotic equivalent of the human nose and taste buds. There are rumors online that Sam Altman wants to create some kind of device that will be based on generative artificial intelligence similar to ChatGPT. Whether it will be an alternative to a smartphone or something else is still unknown. The rumors, courtesy of the information, are backed up by information that Altman is collaborating with ex-Apple designer Joe Ivey, who specializes in custom devices. Just imagine a smartphone with an OS that generates real-time apps based on what the user needs, or automatically picks up the information they need by hearing their conversation. Apple itself is working on artificial intelligence tools to compete with developments from OpenAI, Google, and others. But the company has yet to develop a clear strategy for releasing the technology to consumers. By the way, OpenAI has given ChatGPT back full access to the internet. Now the neural network is not limited to the 2021 data it was trained on and can provide users with up-to-date information, complete with direct links to sources. The new features are already available to ChatGPT Plus and enterprise subscribers. Disclaimer, disclaimer, everything I just said is just a concept, but according to Google, it's gonna cost you approximately a quarter of a million US dollars, lady not included. Where can you get these toys? Well, ever heard of Xpeng? The EV behemoth from China unveiled some incredible concepts in late October during its tech day, presenting three revolutionary products at once. They got a humanoid robot, an electric car with two seat drone in the trunk, and a luxury sedan that transforms into a helicopter. 
So Tech Day last year, the company unveiled a four-legged robotic pony for kids, and this year's surprise for the audience was the humanoid bot PX5. Thanks to its ability to keep its balance, the robot can easily navigate rough terrain such as lawns and gravel. It looks like your grandma walking, but it's incredibly stable. It can even play soccer and ride a Segway. And it doesn't do that squatting thing most robots do today. The arms are functional as well. Each can lift up to six pounds or three kilos of weight, as well as perform tasks dexterously. Some quite useful, especially after a night out, like pouring a glass of water or handing you an Xbox controller. Nick, that's all fine and dandy. Where's the flying car? All right, all right. Expon Aerot, a subsidiary of Expon Motors, has unveiled their groundbreaking Land Aircraft Carrier Modular Flying Car. It's a three-axle minivan with a passenger hexacopter inside. Among other things, it's equipped with an extended range hybrid power system that can recharge the air module multiple times. The 4-5-seater itself is designed with a three-axle six-wheel configuration that allows for a six-by-six all-wheel drive. This and the rear wheel steering should give the driver the ability to go anywhere, including fairly steep slopes. The air module in the body is an all-electric two-seat manned vertical takeoff and landing vehicle for low altitude flights. Did I mention vertical flight? Now, whether this concept will ever be realized remains to be seen, which is a bummer, but it seems this is what transportation of the future could be like. But there was another model presented at Expon Tech Day 2023, and that was the eTOL flying car, which combines the design of a supercar with an intelligent cockpit that easily switches between driving and flying modes. And depending on the mode, the steering wheel and dashboard transform. And this is not just a rendering. You can see the actual car at the show that embodies this crazy futuristic concept. We look forward to live video of the flying car testing on real roads in all available driving modes. Would you like to test drive this bad boy? Leave a comment below and we'll see what we can do. Also, Check out Sorimichi from the Japan Mobility Show 2023. This conceptual model is dual purpose, capable of moving both by air and on the road. The developers, Prodrone, said that the device can fly 30 miles or 50 kilometers with a 110 pound or 50 kilo load. It's designed to solve the problem of delivering urgent cargo to mountainous areas and individual islands during, for example, natural disasters. And to reduce the risk of falling on someone's head in areas with good roads, it will simply drive. Did you know Japanese authorities are actively supporting these kinds of concepts? I didn't know. They're not alone. In the US, Boston Dynamics engineers taught Spot how to conduct dialogue with visitors during tours of the company's lab. They used a combination of visual Q&A model and a little language model called ChatGPT, plus other technologies like speech-to-text and text-to-speech. They also created multiple personalities for the robot, a Shakespeare-era tour guide, all right, a teenage girl, why, and a sarcastic Josh. And as a result, the robot could not only narrate material, but also answer visitors' questions, including unexpected ones. For example, when Spot was asked who its parents were, it led the tour goers to the previous generation of Boston Dynamics robots. The tour itself goes like this. The robot takes photos in each room and tells what it sees while composing poems and complimenting visitors. Although the engineers admit that it's not without failures, the robot dog has sometimes lagged and spewed fake information, which is hilarious if you've ever tinkered with GPT and asked it the right questions. Boston Dynamics engineers intend to further develop options for integrating language models into robotics. Let us know what you think is a great application for this in the comments below. Talking about all things DARPA got their hands on, the U.S. Air Force has confirmed that its Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider heavy strategic bomber has begun ground taxi tests in Palmdale, California. The secret tests may indicate that the first flight of the stealth combat aircraft is scheduled for later this year. Interestingly, previous publications from the B-21 Raider tests caused a flurry of disbelief online, with many users believing the photos to be fake. However, the U.S. Air Force Command claims that the machine does exist. They plan to purchase at least 100 bombers with the first batch entering service by 2021. 
If you want to know more about weapon technologies and their applications, check out Bill Hicks. Back to Japan, Sensei Technologies have demonstrated a giant four-legged robot car. The SR-02 is equipped with a four-passenger cabin and can move forwards and backwards using different gates, tilt its body to a 360, and crouch by bending all four legs to disembark passengers. Now, the standing SR-02 is 6'2", which is a wee under 2 meters tall, and about 11 feet long, which is 3.4 meters. The control software is the Azratech VCDO robot system, which allows the robot's movements to be controlled by an onboard human or external operator. The SR-02 also has a brother the SR-01, which is a Transformer robot introduced in 2018, and they both should be in an amusement park if you've ever seen either in action. Talking about seeing, NatureEye decided to one-up Google Street View and give users all over the world the opportunity to enjoy nature without getting off the couch. To do this, it offers everyone to remotely control drones in protected areas around the world. You have to choose a location, book a flight, take an online training course that ensures you don't drop the drone on an elephant's head, and that's it. Oh, and that'll be 95 US dollars, thank you. Then you take control of a DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise or Mavic 2 Zoom quadcopter and a local guide will talk you through what you're seeing and what's worth seeing. And if things go wrong, don't worry, the drones are equipped with obstacle avoidance and low noise propellers so you don't actually scare the animals. And best of all, you can take cool pictures from the drones and share them with your friends. No selfies with a crocodile, obviously, but not a bad deal. If you're up for it, there's a link in the description. Don't try this at home, kids. Starship delivery robots, you know, the small white boxes with six wheels, have been grazing around the University of Oregon campus for a while now. But it wasn't until this academic semester when an 18-year-old student had this brilliant idea to report that one of these robots contained, you guessed it, an explosive device. This led to a shutdown of the robots, campus pandemonium, and the arrest of the prankster. We couldn't get a hold of the perpetrator, but if we did, we'd tell him to look up Jim Brewer and his pranks. A stone throwaway from Oregon stands Amazon's HQ. As soon as Digit, the humanoid robot, got its first job at Amazon's warehouse, it already had a strong competitor, proving that a robot simply transporting boxes doesn't need such a complex design. We already told you about EvilBot, but since we're talking humanoids, the makers of the self-balancing two-wheeled bot got busy and rolled out some specs. For example, speed, 35 miles an hour or 60 kilometers an hour instead of 3 miles an hour or 5 to 6 kilometers per hour. Lifting and carrying a load weighing up to 140 pounds or 65 kilos instead of 40 pounds or 20 kilos. And yes, its rotating grippers are less dexterous than humanoid arms, but they are enough to grab and move a box. At the same time, the waist-high robot can reach shelves as high as an average person's chest. A compact robot weighing 90 pounds or 40 kilos can race with boxes up to 8 hours in a row while taking care of slopes up to 45 degrees and driving on uneven terrain. And if it does fall, the robot will get up by itself, something Digit has only recently learned how to do. Now, hypothetically, if you had a warehouse, which bot would you go for? The makers of EvoBot didn't stop there. Their concept with an unpronounceable name, zero raised to the power of three din, is that Odin or Odin? I'd go for Odin. It's an autonomous jack of all trades, powered by mechanum omnidirectional wheels and air suspension capable of working both indoors and outdoors. This machine moves at speeds of up to 22 miles an hour or 36 kilometers per hour using LiDAR, GPS, and 3D camera systems to navigate and discern its surroundings. It can position itself precisely around a pallet by lowering itself onto a grabbing pendant, unfolding those strong arms to lift it from both sides using the same openings as a forklift. It then moves the pallets with impressive maneuverability even in confined spaces. And since we're on the topic of close quarters, former Google Nest engineers have reinvented the robot vacuum cleaner. 
Matic doesn't need internet access, moves like a human, relying on vision and object recognition, and cleans dry and wet dirt at the same time. Let me reiterate, Matic doesn't send a map of your house or any other data for that matter anywhere, which is a concern for many potential buyers. Instead of LiDAR, sensors and soft bumpers, the robot uses five RGB cameras and a pattern recognition system to see and understand the world around it. It doesn't have to poke at your shoes to realize there is an obstacle in front of it, and it will distinguish a toy from a pet. Oh, and the robot can be controlled by voice and gestures. Just wave your hand and say, clean up over there, or clean up that bathroom, and it's off to do the job. You can also activate regular patrol mode where the robot will periodically go around the house and clean only where it's needed. And when its container is full and all dirt, including liquid dirt, is collected in one bag with absorbent crystals, the robot will simply park itself by your garbage can and let you know it needs to be cleaned. The bag, like a diaper, is simply pulled out and thrown away. Maddox already got financial backing from Jack Dorsey and Matt Rogers, but Here's a genius solution that'll turn this venture into a unicorn. Attach a Wally head on it. Right? Anyone? Meanwhile, a Canadian company, Deep Trekker, has unveiled the Onyx Amphibious Drone, which can traverse rough terrain and even get 50 feet, or 15 meters, underwater. On land, the drone can be controlled wirelessly. Underwater, though, it needs a cable, which kind of reduces its appeal for autonomous missions. It's one thing to send Onyx across a river while drinking your juice in the hood, and quite another when you have to drag a cable behind it. As far as specs go, the body of the unit is mostly made up of anodized 6061 aluminum and the wheels are shoehorned into all-terrain rubber tires. The Onyx comes standard with a 1080p front-facing camera with remote tilt capability assisted in the dark by four LED spotlights totaling 1100 lumens. Buyers can opt for an optional 4K camera or make an even bigger upgrade by adding rear and side cameras to the drone. Power is provided by a 232 watt hour lithium ion battery. A single charge should reportedly last for two hours of use, and all of this at a friendly price of 43,000 US dollars. At a price like this, what is this thing meant to do? Enlighten me in the comments below, please, because I have no idea. This next one, though, I can get behind. If you live in an area where snow tends to accumulate, then you should check out Everblue Technologies from Japan because they've developed an autonomous snow removal drone. The drone is based on a unit from Suzuki and was presented at Japan Mobility Show 2023. The electric robot weighs 200 pounds or 90 kilos and moves at a speed of three to four miles per hour or six kilometers per hour powerfully raking impressive snowdrifts. On a single charge, it can run for five hours or drive 18 miles or 30 kilometers. Isn't it weird that Canadians thought of the Onyx and the Japanese thought of the snowplow? Shouldn't it be the other way around? And here's another one. ABB, together with Swedish companies Baladin and Elcap, has completed successful tests of the industry's first robotic system called robot charger. They must have hired the same people to name this thing who came up with the Sydney Harbour Bridge. What robot charger does is it makes mining and tunneling safer by automatically placing explosives in predetermined locations underground, hence the term charger. The few manual processes in the mining industry left are about to become one shorter. Blasting schedules in underground mines vary, but in large mines, you can hear up to 15 blasts a day. The robot charger automatically detects boreholes and fills them with charges without human presence, eliminating the need to be in the mine. Now the developers are finalizing the tests, the goal of which is to perform a complete sequence of blasting operations in an underground mine and transfer full control of the robot to the original customer. And after that, the robot charger will be offered to the mass market. Who is this secret customer ABB is working for? Hmm. And while Robot Charger is busy on Earth, the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence is building robots to explore lava caves on the Moon and Mars. These caves could be a temporary base or storage area for astronauts, but they are unexplored and can be extremely dangerous. Which is why 
five European countries put their heads together to create Corob X. It includes three autonomous rovers of different scale and complexity. Rover 1 is like the black guy in horror movies. It's first to dive into the abyss, while other rovers follow. The largest of the three will carry chargers for itself and its smaller brothers, which is a functional touch since it might take some time to explore a cave on the moon and have no sunlight. No clue as to how Corob X's are going to communicate with one another or their operators on Earth, but we shall keep you posted. And finally, ChatGPT scored another victory for humans or over humans? I'm undecided, help me out. By hooking up an AI speech transcriber to ChatGPT, this TikTok mastermind aced a job interview at Lockheed Martin. Kind of a big deal in the military industry complex scheme of things, if you ask me. While the interviewer was in the process of asking a question, this bright fella could already see a nuanced answer on the screen. ChatGPT, how do you go about building an F-16? OpenAI has created a division to analyze potential defense mechanisms against catastrophic risks posed by generative artificial intelligence. Among the goals of the Preparedness Project, which will be led by Alexander Modry, director of MIT's Center for Deployable Machine Learning, is to track, predict, and protect against the dangers posed by today's AI systems. Specifically, OpenAI engineers fear AI's amazing gift of persuasion, generated malware on top of the standard threats to humanity, chemical, biological, and nuclear. To give this division a fast track, Sam Altman's company has also set up a contest for the so-called best threat, where the prize is 25 big ones or a job at OpenAI. The goal is to understand what terrible things can be created using advanced generative AI systems. Any ideas? If you're in a doom and gloom mode, that's perfect. Leave your comment and let's see if we can outsmart this division, David Goggins style. Altman didn't stop there. He announced a new update including customization of the GPT chatbot. Meanwhile, GPT-4 Turbo, which has been trained on information through April 2023, exists in two versions, one designed solely for analyzing text and a second version understanding the context of both text and images. According to Altman, both models will become publicly available in the coming weeks. The GPT-4 Turbo model has a large context window of 128K input tokens, which the company says equates to 300 plus pages of text in a single prompt. In addition, the model has become three times cheaper for developers due to the reduced costs of input and output of a single token. At the same time, Elon Musk launched his own language model, Grok, which he intends to integrate into Tesla. The chatbot uses posts from Social Network X, also owned by Musk, as one of its data sources. Grok, modeled after a guidebook from Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy, promises to respond to users with humor. So far, it's been opened up to select X users and one of them is apparently Sam Altman. Having tested the neural network, Altman posted a screenshot of its responses to X, calling Grok's humor grandfatherly and hinting that it would be easier to train it using, surprise, surprise, GPT. At the same time, XAI claims that their chatbot has been tested to determine the level of math and logic ability compared to current Llama 270B, Inflection 1, GPT 3.5, GPT 4, Palm 2, and Claude 2 models. It's reported, quote, Grok outperformed all models except for GPT 4. Whether this is true or not, we'll find out later. We think that here we can discount Musk's habit to consider the future to have arrived already. For example, he calls FSD an autopilot. Nevertheless, among the design features of the Grok model is the fact that it receives information in real time and is not afraid to talk about taboo topics for other chatbots. Can't wait to see it in action. Talk about action, Dell Complex decided to create a separate state with artificial intelligence on a ship. The idea is to send a ship with 10,000 NVIDIA graphics cards on board to the ocean and deploy its AI power there. Since the ship will be located exclusively in neutral waters, it will not be restricted by government treaties. 
For autonomous operation, the ship will have autonomous power sources including solar panels to power the AI and armed guards. The company says the project will cost at $600 million and that it will cooperate with various countries as a part of it. What exactly is meant by cooperation and why it's needed at all is not really specified. If you got any clues or an inside scoop, hit us up. Meanwhile, China intends to become the world's leader in the production and use of humanoid robots as early as 2025. This was announced by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology of the People's Republic of China. The country already has plans to build several large-scale production facilities as well as a network of specialized small and medium-sized enterprises. Also. On the books are a few cluster zones for industrial development, which will be deeply integrated into the real economy, becoming a new important engine of economic growth. What this means is that the new enterprises will become city-forming enterprises. The whole point is that according to the Chinese government, humanoids are likely to be another breakthrough technology, similar to computers or smartphones, that will change the way we live and work, and all of this by 2027. In particular, robots will be involved in industries such as healthcare, domestic services, agriculture, logistics, and heavy manufacturing. China is increasing the robotization of manufacturing and other areas every year and aiming to reach a rate of at least 500 robots per 10,000 workers by 2025. To see how robots are built in China for a variety of needs, check out our other video in the description. And once you get through that, check out a video of China's plans to build a base on the moon. The presentation titled China's Lunar Space Station and Lava Cave Lunar Base Development Plan was posted on YouTube by user Chen Jun Lon, so the authenticity of this is yet to be confirmed. But up until now, any details of the Chinese National Space Administration's program were kept under wraps. In the video, you can see a modular space station in orbit and a robotic mission to explore the surface to find a suitable location for a base and, you know, look around. There's also descent modules, greenhouses for food, power plants, and of course, manned missions to explore the moon. It should be noted that the Chinese platform will be placed in an equatorial orbit, not a halo orbit like NASA's Gateway. The platform will also be used, judging from the video, as a starting point for building an underground base in the lava caves of our satellite. The video shows the main module of the base, including inflatable housing greenhouses and research labs being lowered into one such cave from the orbital platform. On the surface around the exit from the lava cave, robots print a protective dome with an airlock. Then a solar power station and other buildings are erected. Radio antennas, a garage for lunar rovers, a landing pad for a descent module. At the end of the video, viewers are shown how the Taikonauts will live and work on such a base. Sounds pretty far out there, does it not? I'll go you one further. Did you know that China has their own SpaceX called iSpace? So what if they do? Well, this private company has recently completed successful tests of a reusable rocket. The first stage of the Hyperbola rocket reached a height of almost 600 feet, which is 178 meters, and then demonstrated a controlled descent and landing with an accuracy of just shy of 6 feet, which is 1.7 meters. Hyperbola 2 is a two-stage rocket powered by methane and liquid oxygen. It has a total length of 90 feet, 28 meters, and a payload capacity of 4,188 pounds, or 1.9 tons. Now the company will start building a larger reusable rocket, Hyperbola 3, 226 feet or 69 meters high, which will essentially be the Chinese equivalent of SpaceX's Falcon 9. And since we're back to Musk, the South African Iron Man apparently put his charm to work in FDA offices and managed to get permission from the agency to implant his chips into 11 patients at once. While the standard procedure implies that a new chip is implanted into one patient who is then monitored for a year. Ideally, Neuralink implants should restore the ability to speak and move. Now, having received approval for human trials, Musk's company will operate on 11 patients at once in 2024. 
The cost of each operation is estimated to stand in $10,500, but insurance companies will have to shell out $40,000 per patient. Neuralink has yet to compromise work on the chip. There are plans to increase its runtime on a single charge in the future. The company also has plans to create a chip for the spinal cord. So the implant for the brain will be used to restore the ability to communicate with the outside world and control bionic prostheses. And the spinal cord implant will restore mobility to the patient's own limbs. The startup has already received applications from thousands of patients, but by next year, 11 volunteers will be selected for the first phase of the experiment. My only question is, how do you apply if you can't speak or move? That wasn't a serious question. What is serious, though, is Microsoft Asia. Together with Beijing and Xi'an University, researchers have developed a method that allows large language models like GPT to learn from their own mistakes, similar to humans. The learning from mistakes strategy, LIMA for short, involves creating erroneous problem-solving paths, correcting them with GPT-4, and then training the original models on the corrected data. Experiments have proven that this approach significantly improves the ability of AI models to reason and, in particular, to solve math problems. Lima has proven that in certain cases, machine learning processes can be tailored to resemble human learning. Potentially, this approach could lead to a new breakthrough in AI for healthcare, finance, autonomous vehicles, and who can even fathom what else? Meanwhile, on the other side of the pond, the Pentagon has learned from their mistakes and updated their military strategy for implementing artificial intelligence. The new approach includes improving data, collaborating with outside groups, and using AI to analyze forces and counter cyber threats. The goal is to improve decision making on the battlefield. However, it also emphasizes the potential dangers of AI in autonomous weapons. What is the essence of the new document in layman's terms? So basically, they say, we need to develop infrastructure to improve datasets. Then the military needs to collaborate more with developers outside of the Department of Defense. Thirdly, we need to remove bureaucracy and other obstacles that prevent the military from implementing advanced technologies. Ultimately, the Pentagon wants to get the most complete and detailed analysis of forces on the battlefield using AI, taking into account all data, including classified stuff. The document also mentions strategic competitions with China, which the U.S. could potentially have some tensions with in regions such as the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea. And when we talk tensions, U.S. Marines come to mind. What these gentlemen have decided to do recently is what you'd expect them to do. Mount a grenade launcher on a robot dog. Remember that YouTube video with a regular gun on a robot dog? Well, that don't cut it no more, okay? They've already exhibited that at the Army 2022 form. Even the robot model used was the same, Go from Unitree. Captain Obvious from the ranks of the Marines told the media that the robot is not suitable for real combat, however, because it's too light, fragile, and its charge is not enough for a real mission. The only conclusion that can be drawn from this is that the military is going in circles around the ideas of arming four-legged robots. And Boston Dynamics spot. Where would we be without it? It's saving lives. In the US, it entered a bus where an armed man was found sleeping. Spot woke up the suspicious citizen and prepared him for the arrival of police officers, making their mission safer. Now in Japan, Spot is seriously helping with the decommissioning process of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Despite the fact that more than 10 years have passed since the disaster, much of the area is still unexplored and extremely dangerous for humans. The robot is yet to be affected by the radiation. That's why Robot Dog turned out to be an invaluable asset for the team tasked with this work. It can go where neither wheeled nor tracked robot can, and thanks to its arm, the robot can collect samples, take swabs, pick up small debris, and open doors 10 to 20 times faster than any other. The robot was also able to examine radiation levels and record videos of all the rooms, including those that haven't been opened since the disaster. 
The operators guided the robot, but all they had to do was set the direction the robot should go in. Spot seems to be doing a great job with such an important and dangerous mission. What do you think? Leave your comments below. On to virtual worlds now. Mark Zuckerberg and Lex Friedman have had a chat in the metaverse. The goal was to show how avatars from Zuck have progressed over the last year, but it turned out to be a bit ambiguous. On the one hand, the avatars turned out to be incredibly realistic, completely breaking the idea of remote presence. On the other hand, Mark and Lex are two of the most unemotional people in the world. Not for nothing, Zuckerberg is often classified as a reptile. Few have seen human emotions on his face. So in the experiment, despite the fact that both interviewees spent several hours in the studio where they tried to portray various emotions on camera, in the end, in the meta-universe, effect of emotional involvement was at a minimum. Friedman didn't miss the point and emphasized that the problem was with them, not the technology. Zuckerberg, for his part, noted that his company is now working on the speed with which these realistic avatars are created, literally in a couple of swipes with a smartphone camera in front of the user's face. And finally, Fluid Reality has introduced a high-resolution haptic VR glove that doesn't need to be connected to any other devices or structures. It works by itself and is completely wireless, lightweight and self-contained. Each glove is equipped with 160 dynamic actuators with haptic feedback. These are designed to allow you to feel objects and surfaces accurately and vividly with every fingertip in VR. For example, when playing a virtual violin, you will feel every single string of the instrument. Such sensitivity is realized with the help of bubbles pixels or bubble pixels, which are filled with liquid with the help of electric micropumps. The pumps have no moving parts and work on the principle of electroosmosis, attracting a charge within the liquid and causing it to flow. Difference in the pressure of the pixels on your fingertips is what gives you the sensation of objects and even textures in VR. By the way, we talked about the most advanced gadgets for the meta-universe in a separate video. We'll leave the link for it in the description below. The scandal around OpenAI and Sam Altman just won't settle down, will it? It was given a new twist by Reuters, which received insider information from the company that says that several staff researchers wrote a letter to the board of directors warning them about a powerful discovery in the field of AI, which according to them could threaten mankind. Sources described the letter as the last straw for the board in a long list of grievances against Altman, which also included concerns about commercializing OpenAI advancements before understanding the implications of spreading such technologies. Upon receiving the information, Reuters seeked inquiries from OpenAI and the company naturally declined to comment. However, insiders immediately told the agency that after the request, employees received an internal message where Mira Marotti allegedly confirmed the existence of QSTAR project. Some at OpenAI believe the project could be a breakthrough in the creation of general artificial intelligence. Immediately after the Reuters publication, OpenAI spokesperson Lindsay Held Bolton disassociated herself from QSTAR telling The Verge, quote, Mira told employees what the media reports were about, but did not comment on the accuracy of the information, end quote. Did this appease the media and the public? Not at all. Virtually everyone online, and even my grandma, are convinced that in their research, OpenAI employees have stumbled upon something that predicts the imminent emergence of general AI. And this something greatly encouraged Sam Altman and scared the board of directors so much that they tried to immediately fire Altman and stop this work. But no such luck, QSTAR won this round. So what's the scoop on QSTAR? We previously told you that the AI has learned to solve math problems like a human. Okay, and here's a few more deets. According to Reuters, the model has learned to solve math problems without training and at a level of an elementary school student, but that's not the point. Selecting answers to text queries, the generative AI relies on statistics and the answers may drift from each other. 
They may differ each time. Solving mathematical problems without errors brings AI closer to human intelligence and means its ability to generalize, learn, and understand. Researchers believe that math is the cutting edge of generative AI development. Broadly speaking, problem solving is the ability to distinguish truth from falsehood. This is exactly what has remained a fundamental barrier for current versions of GPT. It implies the ability to self-learn and self-develop on self-generated data. Is it true or not? We think that general AI is a cat in a bag, so we're waiting for new statements from Sam Altman, who managed to keep the position of OpenAI director, loyalty of the company's employees, and faith in the possibility of creating a common artificial intelligence for the benefit of all mankind. Moving on, SpaceX carried out their second test launch of the giant Starship rocket and even recognized it as a success, at least compared to the first launch. This time, the world's most powerful rocket did not destroy the launch pad and even performed a successful stage separation a few minutes after liftoff. The first stage then began its planned descent into the Gulf of Mexico, but instead of being brought down, it exploded mid-air. The second stage, namely the Starship spacecraft, climbed to an altitude of 91 miles, 148 kilometers, after which the control center lost contact with it. Immediately after the loss of communication, a self-destruct command was sent to the ship. Despite the tests going less than smoothly, the ship was still launched into space, the boundary for which is 62 miles or 100 kilometers. It also achieved near-orbital speed of 15,000 miles or 24,000 kilometers per hour. We have to remember that after the first failure, although David Goggins would say after the first attempt, SpaceX changed the principle of stage separation and this time the process went perfectly. It's also worth adding that this time all 33 Raptor engines launched on the first stage of the rocket. Despite the relative success, the reasons for the explosion of the first stage and the loss of communication with the second one will be investigated under the control of the Federal Aviation Administration of the United States. The regulator's permission for the next flight depends on the outcome of that investigation. At the same time, Musk has already said that the next Starship will be fully ready for flight in three to four weeks. Even if SpaceX has not yet received authorization, the speed of the giant rockets coming off the assembly line is absolutely astounding. Talk about goals. More dates for you. U.S. Space Force top secret mission time is now out in the open. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket will deliver the top secret X-37B space plane into orbit on December 7th. The launch is a part of the U.S. Space Force Mission 7. Interestingly, the X-37B is officially super secret, but in fact, it's so well known that the Space Force issued a press release about its upcoming launch and even revealed some of its cargo. The new mission, duration not disclosed, will travel to Earth's orbit to conduct experiments that the Space Force says will be related for future space awareness technologies and long-term effects of space radiation. This includes a NASA experiment called SEED-2, in which plant seeds are exposed to harsh radiation over an extended period of time. This is probably not an exhaustive list, but other experiments have been so far kept quiet. More from the U.S., Food and Drug Administration is recalling the Ascensus Surgical Senhance robot due to unintended movement. The problem involved uncontrolled movement of the laparoscope, causing the instrument to rotate after the surgeon removed the teleoperation option from the system. Although no actual harm was done and the robots designed with an emergency brake capability in case of such situations, the company's robots instantly lost the ability to operate. However, not for good, but only until the developers update the software on their devices. If you remember, in March, Senhance this year became the first and only system of digital laparoscopic surgery for children. 
Senhance features a 0.2 inch or 5 millimeter camera, haptic feedback, eye tracking camera control and 3D visualization. The system uses machine learning and augmented reality to assist surgeons during procedures. By the way, surgical robots have been actively developing lately, but it's extremely difficult for such systems to get permission for sale, and as we've come to find out, it's incredibly easy to lose it. A similar mishap occurred with the cruise robo-taxi. The company had its license for driverless rides revoked after hitting a pedestrian in San Francisco last month. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that the homeless are making their way back to the city after Xi Jinping's visit. Now, the General Motors subsidiary had to recall 950 of its robo-cars after admitting safety issues, including difficulty recognizing children. All of this could play into the hands of rival company Waymo. Their robo-taxis operate in California and out of state. Cruz's problems started early October after a pedestrian found himself on the way of the robo-taxi after being hit by a human driver. Cruz attempted to emergency brake it and pull to the side but ended up dragging the pedestrian 20 feet or 7 meters before coming to a stop and pinning the victim's leg with its rear wheel. This prompted a federal investigation and now the fate of Cruz and the return of its cars on the roads has a huge question mark in front of it. GM has already invested about $1.9 billion into Cruz as of September this year and so far has earned nothing but reputational costs and potential sanctions. $1.9 billion though, they'll work something out, I'm pretty sure. Tero Dynamics has developed a unique transwing drone that can autonomously land on a moving target. Its dihedral folding wings provide exceptional range and payload capacity. The transwing design is a transitional EVTOL glider with cruising flight capability. It changes shape between hover and cruising flight modes, making it one of the smartest airplanes in aviation. The company has built a number of prototypes. The current model is XP4 with a wingspan of 14 feet, 4 meters, and a payload of almost 15 pounds, 7 kilos, with a maximum takeoff weight of 83 pounds, which is 38 kilos. Also, top speed of 115 miles per hour, which is 185 kilometers per hour. The transwing flies autonomously and lands, for example, on the back of a moving truck or a ship at sea. Its excellent range got the U.S. Navy interested in the transwing as a ship-to-shore logistics platform, autonomously delivering cargo. Today, the drone exhibits a strong combination of compactness and wingspan, as well as speed, weight, wind resistance, and other characteristics. What a great thing to have if you happen to own a super yacht. What do you guys say? Engineers from EDH Zurich and MIT were able to 3D print a highly detailed robotic arm with a structure mimicking bones, ligaments, and tendons from different materials in a single go. It was all possible thanks to the Inkbit 3D system. This technology is called Vision Control Jetting, in which four high frame rate cameras and two lasers continuously scan the surface of the object to be printed. Based on the resulting data, a depth map of the object is created, which captures any imperfections in each layer as soon as it is applied. As the next layer is applied, the nozzle adjusts the flow rate to compensate for these imperfections, creating a smooth transition between layers. As a result, the slower drying mastics do so evenly without protrusions in form in the finished product. Therefore, all parts are printed in one go and require no post-processing. DARPA has named four finalists for its super airplane competition. The agency says the machine should fly at a speed of 460 miles per hour or 740 kilometers per hour at an altitude of three to five and a half miles, which is 4,500 to 9,000 meters, carry a load of almost 1,000 pounds, which is 450 kilos, and stay in the air for at least 90 minutes. It should also have the ability to take off and land vertically as well as hover in the air like a quadcopter. 
At the same time, the rapid design transconfiguration for different missions is much more important to the agency than whether the Sprint X-Plane will be controllable or autonomous. The finalists are to be awarded 15 million US dollars to develop this miracle. The money will be divided between Boeing's Aurora Flight Sciences Division, which has a sketch of the envisioned aircraft, Bell Textron, which is already working on a similar HSV tall project, Northrop Grumman, which has a couple of collaborative small aircraft projects, one with Jet Zero, the other with Scaled Composited, and finally, Pesheczki Aircraft Corporation. Nothing is known about its developments in this area, but who else got their fingers crossed for these fine, upstanding finalists, which should have a working prototype no later than 2027? Google DeepMind has unveiled its advanced Lyria AI for music and song creation. The model is capable of generating high-quality vocals, lyrics, and music that mimics the performance style of popular artists. Experimenting with Lyria will be possible through two projects that are being launched on YouTube. The Dream Track experiment will, quote, help deepen musicians' connection with the audience, end quote, while Music AI will provide them with a set of creative tools. That being said, a limited number of users will be able to participate in Dream Track. They will be allowed to create unique musical compositions in the style of popular artists who have volunteered to collaborate with Lyria in training. DeepMind will use Synth ID to watermark Lyria's music, and of course, there were talks that with such an AI there's no need for musicians anymore. But every day we're reminded that any neural network is simply a tool in the hands of a talented person. To find out more about common fears and questions about AI, check out the video in the description. Now it's official. Fourier Intelligence has put the production of its GR1 humanoid robots on stream. What do you think of the spider robot? Notice its body covered in artificial skin. It breathes. It's equipped with a central neural controller based on a pattern generator to replicate breathing movements on the skin. What is that for? Researchers at the University of Southern Denmark decided that such breathable skin would increase the biomorphism of robots and human trust in them. Researchers believe that if the robot breathes, we will immediately be at ease to communicate with it and be sympathetic. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. What about you guys? Leave a comment below and tell me it'll all be fine. Or not. A team from IHMC Robotics has shown progress in their humanoid robot, Nadia. The engineers are currently working on an algorithm to step-by-step -step recovery when the robot loses its balance. It's looking pretty good, but it seems IHMC has a long way to go. South Korean company Naver has developed robots for automated data center maintenance. The Garo and Ciro bots work in pairs, complementing each other. The former is designed to transport equipment weighing up to 880 pounds, which is 400 kilos, at a speed of 6 feet per second, which is 2 meters per second. The robot moves autonomously, but if it notices a human in its vicinity, it will slow down. The second bot is for loading, unloading equipment and installation. The robot's accuracy is impressive. The deviation from the set position is in the range of less than 0.2 inches, which is 2 to 5 millimeters. And it can lift stuff up to a height of 10 feet, which is 3 meters. Over the last decades, the need for new data centers has been growing, which means that Garo and Ciro will definitely not be out of work anytime soon. Engineers from KimLab decided to try to equip the robot dog with not one, but two robotic arms at once. At the same time, they didn't develop a humanoid torso, but simply attached two arms to the body of the robot. The PAPRAS, which is plug-and-play robotic arm system, manipulators are KimLab's own development. The engineers were able to configure two PAPRAS systems so that they work in parallel. The developers report that they were able to perform movements with mobile devices as well as fulfill entertainment applications and human interaction. 
When was the last time you gave Gemini a thought? If it's been a while, then Google got you covered because it unveiled its generative AI Gemini, which developers say is more powerful than GPT-4 and could surpass humans in the future. The developers say Gemini can code in Python, Java, C++, and it can create websites that dynamically reprogram themselves come new features. The Google team claims it has managed to create the first model that achieved a 90% success rate at MMLU, which is Massive Multitasking Language Understanding Test. It beat human experts by 0.2% as well as GPT-4 by 3.6%. Gemini's advantage was proven in a number of intellectually rigorous and problem-solving tasks across 57 knowledge areas including math, physics, history, law, medicine, and ethics. The advantage of the model is that it was originally designed as a multimodal model, meaning it can work with text, video, and audio. According to the presentation, when other models look at an image and think about it in words, Gemini takes notice of the nuances inherent to the medium. In the future, the model's perceptual domain will encompass both touch and haptic feedback. But is it really that abfab? It seems not quite. First users who have already tested a lighter version of Gemini in Google's chatbot Bard have reported deep disappointment. The neural network not only falsified facts when answering questions about 2023 Oscars, but also failed to follow simple instructions, such as coming up with a six-letter word in French. The AI produced a seven-letter word. Sacre On top of that, the video demonstrating Gemini's capabilities was edited, which was considered by some users, most likely Altman fans, as fake. In the video, the AI recognizes objects, tracks the dynamics of their appearance, and reasons while communicating with the user, cracking jokes and admitting to its own mishaps. The video description states, quote, For demonstration purposes, latency has been reduced and Gemini's responses have been shortened, end quote. Google spokesperson explained that all queries were real but truncated for brevity and that Gemini processed text queries that were voiced separately for the video and then recognized still images. However, from the video, a layman can gather that the neural network can casually keep up a conversation and is able to observe and react to objects in real time. Is this done for inspiration as Google claims or is it baloney? Who's inspired like that? What do you guys think? Leave your comments below to start a discussion. In the rapidly evolving AI race, Elon Musk is looking for a billion US dollars of investment for his artificial intelligence project XAI. The startup has already raised 135 million, which arguably is peanuts, since to compete with OpenAI, which has 10 billion planted in AI training infrastructure, Musk is gonna need more. Whether investors believe that the South African Iron Man will be able to compete with Altman, time will tell. For now though, Grok is known more for its peculiar sense of humor than for coming close to GPT 3.5 in benchmark testing. Obviously, XAI should not be underestimated. It has a strong team from former developers of the same OpenAI and Google DeepMind. But will investors now lean towards Musk's chutzpah more than Altman's success, whose company recently trademarked GPT-6 and GPT-7? By the way, the Altman scandal is still going strong. The other day, The New Yorker published an article written by a journalist who temporarily took a job at OpenAI for the sake of information. In it, Charles DeWig claims that a number of board members thought Sam Altman was not only lacking candidness, but in fact, quote, manipulative and treacherous, end quote. It's hard to say who the board members feared more, intelligent computers or an out-of-control Altman, the article says. This is kind of irrelevant now, though, since it's unlikely that anyone at OpenAI will try to oust Altman again. Perhaps the whole article is an echo of the discontent of those who tried to fire him. Check out Wall Street Journal and a certain Helen Toner for more. AI news doesn't end there. Recently, over 50 companies, including IBM, Intel, Oracle, AMD, NASA, Sony, Meta, as well as Harvard, Yale, and other universities, have formed an alliance to oppose the giants of the market in the face of OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google. From a bird's eye view, this looks like an attempt by the underdogs to play catch up with the leaders through pooling significant resources. The official objective of the alliance, though, is open source R&D available to all. The new consortium also announced support for researchers around the world, with short-term goals being the creation of a variety of multilingual and multimodal AI models designed for research in different science areas. Well, hold it! Doesn't that remind you of something? Six letters, starts with an O, ends with an I, and was founded as a non-profit for the good of humanity. Wink wink, nudge nudge. 
Moving on to more physical news now, the AUKUS partnership agreement between USA, UK, and Australia has provisions for building nuclear submarines, but also for a global tracking network for deep space defense. Who'd have thunk it? And what is it exactly these fine, upstanding, and concerned governments are planning to protect in deep space? Here's the rundown. Each of the participating countries will build a tracking station on its territory that will have higher sensitivity, better accuracy, increased bandwidth, and more flexible tracking than current radar systems. This should allow AUKUS nations to identify potential threats to both military and civilian satellites and systems, help deter conflict, better address space traffic management issues, and support a growing commercial space sector. The hype around space is on the rise as well, despite a slower pace than AI, but still. To infinity and beyond. More military stuff for ya. UK Ministry of Defense wants to integrate ChatGPT into close quarters combat simulation robots. SimStriker is a system of sensors and interactive targets in labyrinth-like corridors and rooms. The robots here are not just dummies, they are motorized and equipped with hit sensors that record the accuracy and rate of fire. These robots can detect motion, light, sound, as well as raise the alarm, return fire with non-lethal weapons, and even respond verbally. According to the commanders, SimStriker's chatty robot targets with AI brains will better prepare soldiers for real-world combat conditions and inherent surprises. On to civilian news, Digit, the Amazon robot, got a new job. Another retail giant, GXO Logistics, decided to give Digit a shot. So far, it's just a pilot project, and the robot is only tasked with transferring boxes from GXO's AMRs, which are autonomous mobile robots, to a conveyor belt. A spokesperson for the company made it clear recently that if you've ordered something from them in the last two weeks, it's likely that your product has passed through the robot's hands. Digit's mission is not as simple as it seems. Developers don't know in advance what kind of flooring their client's warehouse will have, nor do they know the level of lighting, the width of the aisles, or what kind of shelving or mobile robots will be used. All of these should put Digit's design and reliability to the test. Yet, GXO is optimistic and says it's ready to entrust the robot with new tasks and even have a direct line of communication with the AMR fleet manager. It's a slow start, but the company sees humanoid robots as the perfect bridge towards islands of automation. More on space, the US General Accounting Office has done the math and concluded that the moon landing mission scheduled for 2025 is going to have to take a rain check until 2027. This is due to the fact that Stanley Kubrick died and NASA had problems casting the right director. I kid, I kid! The third Artemis mission is being led down by contractors. Both developers of the human landing system for astronaut transportation to the surface of the moon are way behind on their deadlines. The first one being SpaceX because of Starship's failures. Although everyone and NASA knew from the get-go that Musk's deadlines are notoriously ambitious. But he's not the only one holding up the line. Axiom, the company that's responsible for developing spacesuits, still hasn't gotten off the ground with its end of the bargain. They don't even have a prototype. Seems like Axiom employees are fans of Charles Lamb, who among other things is famous for saying, I always arrive late at the office, but I make up for it by leaving early. Talking about time management, DARPA isn't wasting any time. It's selected 14 companies, SpaceX included, to design lunar infrastructure. Get this, in the next seven months, the lucky chosen ones will have to develop and present a project for self-sustaining lunar architecture in the next decade. Each company will have a different objective such as communication, navigation, or mining. Bottom line, by mid-2030s, DARPA wants to understand exactly how to deploy and maintain integrated infrastructure on the moon for quote, thriving commercial economy, end quote. Yeah, DARPA, okay, we'll pretend that at a time when everyone's talking about the strategic importance of space and its military application, you're oblivious to it all. Only selling moon rocks and fixing Wi-Fi is what you're looking for. The developers of the animal robot from Swiss Mile decided that even a fast, energy-efficient robopod is not the limit. Swiss Mile engineers decided to turn their robot on wheels into a shapeshifter. Whether you need a four-legged or a two-legged companion, they got you covered. Many companies go the other way, namely by attaching a robotic arm or two to the robot's back. But not Swiss Mile. First, they decided to explore the limits of the robot's limbs. As a result, the robot was able to accurately press an elevator button with its wheel, open doors, and even throw boxes into containers in a way that would make airport baggage handlers proud. 
But it's not just animal skills themselves that are interesting. It's how the engineers managed to teach it. They developed a new approach they called curiosity-based learning. Essentially, it's reinforcement learning where the robot is rewarded for successfully completing a task, except that it has to figure out how to accomplish it entirely on its own, based on trial and error. To incentivize it, engineers encourage the robot to play with any objects at its disposal, as long as it's related to the end goal. Just gotta set a few key variables, point to the objects that might be relevant, give the robot a goal, and let it go hog wild. This sounds super fun, but also kinda creepy. What's your take? Researchers from Jordan and Qatar have developed a 600-foot, 200-meter-tall solar tower capable of generating clean energy 24-7. It combines an upflow solar tower and a downflow cooling tower combined in one structure. The solar upflow system works by heating the air at ground level and then using the hot air that rises to direct it up a tall tower with turbines. The air is heated under a large roof that covers the collection area and is made of material to trap heat. On the other hand, a cooling tower with a downward flow forces the air downward to spin another turbine. This is accomplished by spraying a fine water mist into the surrounding air at the top of the tower, making it both cooler and heavier and directing it downward. In this case, the upflow tower is placed in the middle and is surrounded by 10 downflow towers located outside so that it can operate in both upflow and downflow modes at the same time. So far, there's a mock-up and a simulation test that showed about 753 megawatt hours of energy per year. The only drawback that we can see here is that you can't really plant it in your backyard now, can you? More on energy, over 50 years in the making and the world's largest fusion reactor, the JT-60SA Tokamak, is finally operational in Japan. Tokamaks are toroidal reactors that are among the main contenders for the title of the first commercially viable fusion power plants. They were first conceived by Soviet scientists back in the 1950s. By design, they're a large donut-shaped chamber surrounded by magnetic coils that compress plasma made up of hydrogen isotopes until it reaches pressures and temperatures found only inside the sun. Simple in theory, but extremely difficult to build a reactor that can sustain a fusion reaction of this magnitude. The JT-60SA is no exception and it's still far from being a full-fledged generator, but it can be used to, for example, test materials. Research is ongoing as thermonuclear energy is a long-time dream of mankind. Billions of dollars have already been spent on making it happen, but thus far, it remains a dream. A dream of clean and limitless energy. Here's another valuable development for humanity. German's Fraunhofer Institute for Communication, Information Processing, and Ergonomics developed Lucy. It's an add-on for drones, enabling quicker response to survivors at disaster sites. Basically, it's a set of MEMS microphones that can be mounted on the chassis of existing multi-rotor drones. The acronym in the name stands for Listening System Utilizing a Crow's Nest Array. In the current version, 48 robust mics are arranged in a special geometric pattern that optimizes the tool's ability to pinpoint the direction of a particular sound. It can even pick up frequencies that are unavailable to the human ear. At the same time, AI technologies block out distracting sounds such as wind, rescue equipment, and the drone's own rotors. The same algorithms look for screaming, banging, or popping noises that trapped survivors might use to draw attention to themselves. An updated version of the system is in the making and will include 256 microphones this time. Drones in general are becoming more useful. A group of scientists from the same institute recently proposed a project in which drones will prevent wind turbines from icing by spraying them with an environmentally friendly coating. According to the engineers, it's cheaper than building heating systems into the wind turbines. And drones can also deliver defibrillators faster than ambulances. This is already being used in Sweden. The fact is that if a person's heart stops beating outside the hospital, his chances of survival are less than 10%. What can save a life here is an automatic external defibrillator that can diagnose dangerous heart rhythms and restore normal heart function with an electric shock. Using them is easy as the devices themselves provide step-by-step -step voice instructions so that any passerby can use them correctly. These devices flew to ambulance call sites, and as a result, during the 11 months of the experiment, the drones got to patients before the ambulance did in 67% of cases, and once actually saved a person's life. Danish medical technology startup Ropka APS has released its first medical product, the Arthur Arthritis Treatment Robot, which is already being used in hospitals. The machine is based on the LBR Med Lightweight Arm and supports early diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis using robotic ultrasound. At the same time, no humans are needed. Arthur provides autonomous examination and can fill the shortage of specialists in clinics. 
Wayland has released its sixth version of its alpha dog robot pet, Baby Alpha. It's reported that each robo pet will have a unique personality and will be able to express its emotions. Baby Alpha can also sing, dance, and play with its human. In addition, the robot will be able to make FaceTime calls. And yet, after the legendary Ibo, the design of the robot seems a tad underdeveloped. Yay or nay? First things first, what does the new Optimus have that other robots don't? Is it just media hype or is there a reason for all this attention? And how did this video affect the predictions from Morgan Stanley? First, the robot's design is gradually getting closer to the original rendering, although of course it's clear that it won't be exactly the same. Second, the robot's hardware has been upgraded, making it 22 pounds or 10 kilos lighter and at the same time 30% faster, although the exact walking speed of the robot is not mentioned. Thirdly, and this is pretty cool, the robot's movements have become much smoother. The hands are so plastic that some viewers thought it was computer graphics. On top of that, Optimus has gained tenderness. Highly sensitive, tactile sensors in the robot's fingertips allow it to gently handle even eggs. Over easy or scrambled? The Gen 2 robot has two degrees of freedom in its neck, integrated electronics and wiring in a human-shaped foot with toes and force torque sensors. The arms got an upgrade as well to 11 degrees of freedom, faster actuators and tactile sensors on all fingers. The robot now looks more like a Model S, unlike the last version, which many compared it to a Cybertruck. Elon Musk, by the way, presenting the novelty, this time said absolutely nothing about the timing of production and the cost of the robot. Earlier, however, he said that Optimus will cost less than $20,000. However, for example, the finally launched Cybertruck costs one Tesla bot more than the originally announced price. The media reports that there are already around 40 shiny metal cars at the factory in Texas, and the reviews are pouring in like crazy. There's even videos of this novelty being disassembled. Don't try this at home, kids. At the same time, the Apocalypse car got an ironic accessory, a sticker in the form of broken glass, a callback to Musk's faux pas at the Cybertruck presentation. There's many things you can say about Elon, but one thing's for sure, his sense of humor is on point. Eh, not bad. <laughs> uh, room for improvement. <laughs> The Optimus robot got many folks excited, not only robotics fans, but also none other than Morgan Stanley, the investment giant. The company's experts, inspired by the video and the pace at which Tesla is improving the robot, predicted explosive growth in the company's stock. According to analysts, artificial intelligence is a thriving industry and is experiencing what you would call a big bang. They say when this technology moves into the physical world, like robots in general and Optimus in particular, this could disrupt 30% of the global labor market and make close to to $30 trillion with a T for those who enter the robot market in time. In other words, first movers aren't going to be scrambling for rent. What do you guys think? Care to debate Morgan Stanley? Leave a comment below and share your thoughts. Moving on, Digit, the humanoid robot from Agility Robotics, can now understand commands in natural language. The company has conducted experiments with ChatGPT before. Check out our previous videos for that. But now, Agility engineers announced the use of a large language model, which as of this moment remains nameless, in order to, quote, see the physical embodiment of artificial intelligence, end quote. For the experiment, the robot was placed in an environment with towers of different boxes. The robot knew the difference between the boxes, but had no idea what to do with them. The engineers then began toying with the robot by giving it commands along the lines of, quote, take a box the color of Darth Vader's lightsaber and put it on the tallest tower. The robot thought and strategized its actions, and the neural network commented on its actions in the chat. Pretty neat, huh? By the way, we talked about GPT and how it will change the world of robotics in another video found in the description below. Next up is Unitree. This Chinese company is also trying to keep up in the field of humanoid robots. Moreover, the H1 bot, mercilessly kicked in this video, can already be ordered for just under 90 grand. Get in line, folks. First, happy customers should receive their late Christmas present at the end of February next year. H1 stands at 5'11", which is 180 centimeters tall, and weighs around 100 pounds, which is 47 kilos. It can walk up to 16 feet per second, or 5 meters per second, and has 4 degrees of freedom for each arm and 5 for each leg. At the same time, it can carry a Shih Tzu, or about 17 pounds, or 8 kilos. The robot is positioned as a research project 
site for secondary development while its design is still being refined. For example, there's plans for grippers and hands and more degrees of freedom for the legs. The robot is equipped with two integrated Intel Core i7 processors, 3D LiDAR, and a depth camera to detect obstacles and objects. Unitree is splurging on a one-year warranty for the bot and claims that maintenance will not be a problem as the entire design is modular, as in simple plug and play. And while some robots are desperately looking for a customer, others are working 24-7 in all kinds of weather. That's exactly what Anybotics boasts about in its new video. It shows the working life of Animal, an autonomous robot designed for inspections of industrial facilities. I feel like that's the first job to go, so all you industrial facility inspectors out there better start looking at your options right now. Robotic Systems Lab from Zurich University of Technology presented Barry, a versatile pack robot with a payload of 200 pounds or 90 kilos. The developers decided that the world has enough four-legged pet robots and inspectors and thought it's worth turning to the function that people originally assigned to such machines. Remember the first four-legged robot, LS3 from Boston Dynamics? It wasn't a dog, it was a mule, built to accompany people and carry quite a bit. Unlike LS3, Barry, though, is compact and pretty quiet. The robot weighs 48 pounds, around 20 kilos, and doesn't need to know the size, weight, or weight distribution of what it's carrying, just like a real mule. This makes Barry's payload capacity really useful, as it doesn't have to be customized for each load. Plus, it can operate with a payload for more than two hours and travel almost six miles or 10 kilometers. The developers hope that the robot will quickly find work on construction sites as a rescue bot and a walking wheelchair. Would you guys ride one of these to work? Another robot dog also made its mark this week. A new development called simply Hound set a new Guinness World Record in the 100-meter sprint, becoming the fastest four-legged robot. The 100-pound, 45-kilo robot created by Korean engineers at KAST was able to cover the 100-meter sprint in 19.87 seconds with an average speed of 11 miles or 18 kilometers per hour. This is not to say that Hound is the fastest robot on four legs. Unrivaled so far remains the robot Cheetah from Boston Dynamics, which was able to reach a speed of 28 miles or 45 kilometers per hour, but under slightly different conditions. While the fastest bipedal robot is Cassie from Agility Robotics. It averaged a speed of nine miles or 14 and a half kilometers per hour on a 100 meter race. On to Australia now, scientists from the University of Western Sydney announced that they have created the world's first neuromorphic supercomputer the size of a human brain. Deep South is capable of modeling pulse neural networks on the scale of our brains and performing 228 trillion synaptic operations per second. Why is this important? Many a researcher believe that only a lack of computing power and the cost of computing itself stand in the way of the much anticipated boom of artificial intelligence. At the same time, our brain brains can learn very quickly from small amounts of messy data or process the equivalent of a billion, billion, billion math operations every second, all on a measly 20 watts of energy. The development of a working neuromorphic supercomputer such as Deep South could be the solution to all of the developers' problems. Deep South is expected to come online in April 2024. The research team expects it to be able to process huge amounts of data at high speeds while being much smaller than other supercomputers and eating up much less power through the use of a pulsed neural network. Deep South is modular and scalable using commercially available hardware so it can be expanded or downsized in the future for different tasks. Interestingly, there are teams around the world trying to solve a similar problem but in a different way, namely by trying to connect supercomputer chips with living human brain tissue. For example, scientists from Indiana University have created a cyborg computer with a living organoid brain. And here's the kicker it has passed machine learning tests. The Brainware system uses a ball of self-organizing living human brain cells mounted on an electrode chip. To create such a device, the researchers grew a tiny brain-like organoid from human stem cells. Then they connected it to a computer and demonstrated its potential as a kind of organic machine learning chip, showing that it can quickly recognize speech and make mathematical predictions. 
Over time, its success rate kept increasing, which proves that such three-dimensional organoids of the human brain can form functional neural networks and work as a new class of hardware for machine learning, again, naturally cutting corners on computing time and energy consumption. It does have limitations though. First, there's the conveyor belt to grow organoids en masse and keep them alive and healthy. And second, or it actually should have been the first, uh, there are ethical issues of creating a microbrain from human neurons and connecting it to cyborg computers. But in this beautiful corporate shopping mall world that we live in, if this technology has potential, will ethical issues stop anyone? Yay or nay? What do you say? strange doesn't end there. Scientists from Duke University and Harvard Medical School have invented a new method called deep penetrating acoustic volumetric printing. It allows to inject liquid biocompatible ink into the human body and then print from it right there with the help of ultrasound the necessary tissues or even implants. It turns out to be a kind of 3D printing carried out right in our body. After printing the desired object, it's suggested to remove the remaining ink with the help of a syringe. At the same time, depending on the purpose, it's possible to use both sustainable and biodegradable materials for printing. The scientists have already tested the method on a goat by printing a section of its heart. They have also reconstructed a section of bone in a chicken this way. And finally, in a third application, the researchers have printed hydrogels for dosing chemotherapy drugs inside liver tissue. Want to know more? We got you covered. Check out our video about top trends of the future in the description below. Back to simpler stuff. Xtalpi and ABB Robotics have automated biochemistry labs in China with Gofa Cobots, which is like a robot but collaborative. More than 100 robots will now conduct experiments in areas such as synthesis and crystallization, helping create new drugs and materials. Apparently, it's as easy as pie to set up the robots lab workers can do it themselves. Each automated workstation can perform hundreds of different experiments, with ABB Cobots working a variety of challenging environments like areas without moisture or oxygen. Maybe, and let's put two and two together, these robots can be set up to grow organoids for neuromorphic computers which will solve, say, the problem of creating new medicines. Huh? Pass it along. On to OpenAI. The company has stated that today 20% of its computing power is dedicated to creating defenses against superintelligent artificial intelligence. Now why would they say that? The team to prevent potentially dangerous situations of superintelligent intelligence getting out of hand was created a long time ago, but nothing was previously reported. Recently, the media found out that since Sam Altman is confident in the imminent emergence of strong AI, the new super alignment team has now received at its disposal a fifth of the company's facilities and is engaged in the development of ways to manage, regulate, and control superintelligent AI systems. It just so happened that this team is led by Ilya Sutskever, the same guy who took a stab at a failed coup against Alpen and was ousted himself from the board of directors. His position in the company is quite precarious, but looks like he has a new title, at least for now. The approach currently explored at Super Alignment Team is to use less complex models such as GPT-2 to guide the development of more complex ones such as GPT-4 in the right direction. The weaker model acts in effect as an analog of a human trying to control the more advanced AI. The developers say that all of their findings will be made available to the public. When? We don't know. But I'm stocking up on popcorn and tuna and beans and a whole bunch of other things. You should probably too. And while some people are trying to make sense of this planet, the European Space Agency will launch its most ambitious research mission yet, in 2028, to search for past and present signs of life on Mars. The ESA's Rosalind Franklin rover is fully responsible for the mission's success, reportedly has a unique scientific capability to search for evidence of past life on the red planet thanks to the rigs and the scientific instruments on it. And if you're wondering, what has the European Space Agency come up with this time that Perseverance doesn't? have a drill. Yeah, imagine being the scientist being responsible for this. Guys, I forgot a drill on Perseverance. Oopsie. Looks like we got to send Rosalind Franklin to straighten that matter out and get samples protected from surface radiation and extreme temperatures. The samples will then be analyzed on the spot with the help of the robot's onboard lab and hopefully will once and for all put the question of life on Mars to rest.
there's more, but we're out of time. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and join our cozy community in Telegram. More things to come. Until then, bye-bye.